undefeated. Welcome in. It is the start of a new era, the DeBoer era, as practice kicked off yesterday. Kyle, we have got a ton to talk about. But yeah. before we can even think about any of that, <laughs> we have to hear from you. Ladies and gentlemen, our man, Kyle Henderson, the man who has the channel, was live yeah. at the press conference yesterday. Kyle, first and foremost, how are you doing this morning? Thank you for allowing me to be on here. But yeah. what was it like? What did you notice? What were the differences? Mm. Got to hear your thoughts on the start of the new era. Yeah, well, uh, good morning to everybody. And please run the thumbs up on all these videos. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for supporting Ty, one of our great content creators right here at Bama Football on YouTube. Same with Sean, Coach Smook. Uh, Meryl should be back in action um probably here in a couple weeks um so we'll have him uh, back in the fold for the that second half of spring football but um and of course you know taylor our great producer right here at bama football on youtube really much more than the producer um really the boss lady here at uh, bama football on youtube so um you know what was amazing is to kind of see um coach smook um come over here um because the dude like moved from virginia uh to cover the team and uh, it's pretty admirable, to be honest. You know, I mean, I don't know Coach Smook from anybody. Um, but in order to, like, take a chance on people, you have to give them an opportunity to see how they want to work. And I think kind of in this day and age of, like, what is your work ethic? How much can you bring to the table in terms of value? How hungry are you to learn kind of the business and uh, just kind of jump in? And um, it was pretty cool to see. Um, him kind of in that environment. Of course, we've been, you know, this is my eighth year now covering the team. I think from the perspective of um, watching, um, you know, Coach Kalen DeBoer at the podium, um, you know, I think it's been a pretty fluid transition in terms of moving from Coach Kalen DeBoer uh, or from Coach Saban to Coach Kalen DeBoer. And I think he handled himself, you know, very well. And I think that he still, you know, is going to understand more and more about how big the media is here compared to Washington. Um, covering uh, football is completely different. At I'm sure he had, you know, his 30. I don't even know how many, but I guarantee you it's like, you know, five times the size. And they're probably going to learn that on Wednesday because how are they breaking out their open practice is uh, they're going to have interviews on the field after. And I think he's probably thinking there's going to be like 10 to 15 people, you know, within. They're going to have like, I think, like four different areas where you can get interviews from. But I don't think he, he understands how many people are going to be there tomorrow. I think that you probably get, you know, 150 people, you know, 100 people, something like that, covering the team. I mean, it's just it's the biggest market in college football. So I don't know, um, you know, if they'll continue that because Coach Saban always had him at the podium. So th that'll be different tomorrow. And getting an opportunity to see uh, the team in practice uh, will be interesting. Now, the SID um, said that if it becomes a competitive disadvantage for Alabama to have so many media members out at practice, they will close it. Um, and I'm sure that that will happen. I mean, think about it. Every single person, if you have 150 people out there, there's going to be so much footage to be distributed, right? And um, I think this will kind of last and then it will get shut down. So enjoy it while it lasts and we're going to get as much B-roll as we can. Uh, Kalen DeBoer is very well-spoken. He's very articulate. I think he's a guy that doesn't necessarily beat around the bush. Um, he answered all of the questions great. Um, and, um, you know, I... I uh, I look forward to continuing to see him uh, working with the media. But I, I liked his comments about uh, Jalen Milrow, about uh, Keon Sab. I liked it. Uh, I thought one of the biggest things from like an overall team perspective, too, is kind of the helmet communications in terms of um, that being an added um, addition to college football. It's like now they're working with headsets. And I was thinking about this, Ty. You know, we always talk about who uh, the college football commissioner is. And I've always said it was Coach Saban. I've said that, you know, for the last three years. Coach Saban said at the Rose Bowl, I'd like to see helmet communications. And now, guess what? <laughs> They're literally practiced with helmet communications yesterday. So that's kind of the role that you're going to see Coach Saban is his, you know, impact throughout college football. But um, really good scene yesterday here in Tuscaloosa. So many media members um, and a lot of good energy uh, around the program going in. So how weird was it for the first time in eight years? seeing someone take that podium 
not name Nick Saban? Because I, I can imagine yeah. as impressive as Coach DeBoer is, that was uh -huh. still like, okay, it's it's real now, right? Mm -hmm. Like, And I know that sounds weird to the yeah. undefeated yeah, because yeah. I've been covering this for the past month, but for you to be boots on the ground, did you really get that feeling like, ah, okay, now it's 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 really here? Now, you know what? It wasn't as dramatic as I thought it'd be. I, really? I guess Alabama's done like a pretty good job, at, you know, getting us ready for all of this. It really, maybe after the first game or something like that, but honestly, it didn't. It wasn't like this huge shock value. I think there was a lot of people just eager to see him at the podium and stuff like that, but it wasn't like overly shocking. I don't know why. I can't put my finger on it. We've been live. Basically, twenty four seven since Saban retired, yeah. that we've kind yeah. of become so jaded to the situation. Yeah, I yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was, uh, yeah, maybe that's it. But it didn't seem like it seemed like business as usual. To be honest, I mean, um, I think there'll be uh, you know a couple things that you know change from you know the next couple weeks or whatever. But Honestly, it didn't really seem like a huge shock value. It was good. It was like we needed to get to that point and we needed to hear him from the podium. But other than that, it wasn't like, you know, oh, my God, it's someone different. Like he came in. I liked his just straightforward approach too. he had his, you know, the hat on and, you know, the the Alabama, you know, kind of like long sleeve or whatever that type of jacket was. Um, no, it wasn't like this, like shocking thing. Surprisingly, I was kind of wondering how that would be, but it, it really wasn't. <laughs> I, I saw someone post a meme on Twitter and to me it was so perfect. And granted, this was like weeks ago before spring practice came, but the meme was something to the effect of me whenever Coach DeBoer takes the podium after the first spring practice. And it was the scene from Harry Potter where Harry is screaming at Snape, how dare you stand where he stood? <laughs> talking about him being the headmaster. So yeah, I thought that was hilarious. I was super interested in hearing from you there, but Kyle, we got the B roll footage. Anything stand out to you in the B roll footage that you find interesting? Um, I, I think this was interesting right here. So someone pointed this out to me in the footage. I don't know if this is like, there's any truth to that, but do you see this? Hel so this is Kendra Glaw right here. And this is from Alabama. They didn't send out media footage. This is from like their social media account, but check this out. So you have Kendra Glaw right here. Okay. So he he's going to stiff arm a helmet that is number 17. So who was number 17 last year? Fam, who was number 17? Someone who is no longer here this year. <laughs> so someone pointed this out. I didn't cut. I didn't come up with this. Now I'm rolling with it because it's hilarious. But it they're stiff arms. So all of the wide receivers. By the way, Kendra Glaw looks thick right here. He is like the Debo Sam. He wanted to be. He wants to be compared more to uh, DJ Metcalf though. Metcalf. Like that's who he's like. Because he I, I thought hard. Yeah. So I asked him. I um I asked him at the Rose Bowl. I was like, so you because I'm a 49er fan. I was like, so you like you know. How's the Debo comparisons? He's like, I'm ah, more like Metcalf. And I was like, oh, that's that's fine with Alabama fans for sure. But what no, what I noticed on here is they're stiff arming this Isaiah Bond helmet, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, and I think it's kind of, you know, it look, there's so many things that are art that are by design, um, you know, within, you know, Alabama. They're so there's like a think tank of all these like geniuses that come up with all these little things. So. Um, is it a coincidence? Uh, I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. You know, that might be a helmet that they had. It's like 17 and they're wide receivers. But think about it. They're wide receivers. They're they're stiff arming it. I, I don't know. I like to think of it. And look, there's no truth to this. But I see it as, hey, you know, we're stiff arming somebody who didn't want to be here. Focus on the players that are here. Um, look, this is a reminder. Like, if you're not here, you're a floating head to us. You're dead to us. So I, I don't know. <laughs> it was, uh, I thought that was interesting. And then I also thought that in this, and there's, there's also some uh, photos that came out as well. And I'll, I'll play some of those out. Um, trying to pause it right here. The, the footage was so quick. Deontay Lawson now being just number zero. Agent that's zero. He's the first player in history to be zero. So I, I, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, James, what's up, man? Thank you for becoming a member right here on uh, Bama Football on YouTube. How to do that? Hit the hyperlink above this video. Uh, for just $2.99, you can support the product right here at Bama Football on YouTube. Uh, Bama Football on YouTube, uh, we do have boots on the ground here in Tuscaloosa, uh, but we also have great content creators uh, that come on and cover uh, and talk Alabama football. 
you know, from, um, from all over, honestly. So, um, I really want this channel to have talent on the channel and Ty does a great job and we'll get to his segment in just a minute. Just kind of warming up the show. Uh, appreciate you guys being here and thank you very much, uh, Dickie for, uh, joining us. Um, so I saw, you know, um, Deontay Lawson now number zero. Um, I thought it was good to see some footage of, um, Danny Lewis. He's a tight end that, you know, hopefully get some more opportunities this season. Last spring, um, he actually started. He's six foot five, 265 pounds. And, um, you know, I think the tight end room overall has some really good balance. Um, and like I said, uh, during my segment, I'm, I'm going to act, I'm actually working on photos right now. I organize the photos so we can have them, um, you know, to use like during future shows and whatnot. And I also, you know, Smook is going to start organizing the B roll. Um, but yeah, there are some really good photos that came out yesterday. I mean, here's uh, Coach Kalen DeBoer um, in action. And as you can see, there's the, it's a different, you know, hat, um, which is fine. I actually like that hat and I like the overall gear. Um, here's a good picture right here of um, this is Peyton Woodyard, who's a freshman. I love that sleeve that he has on, honestly. Um, all right. I mean, that's, that's a nice sleeve. Uh, then you also have this is uh, Tyler Booker, right? Getting in some work. And then you have. Um, uh, Justice Haynes, and then you have uh, another picture of uh, Coach Kalen DeBoer. I'm going to be showing a photo during my segment, and I think I posted this inside Slack. It was kind of like a picture that was posted by Courtney Morgan, um, who's a GM. He posted it on his social media account. It was interesting because um, kind of of uh, the offensive line. Ty, did you see? Did you have a chance to look at that photo? Yeah, you had Quay over there at Wolf. You had Jeremiah Alexander, which yeah. we were talking about. Uh, yeah. He was with inside linebacker with the previous staff. Mm -hmm. And it seems that that looks to carry over into this staff. Um, we had Justin Jefferson at inside linebacker, Ty Simpson, Justice Haynes in the picture. Uh, so, you know, just an interesting little insight into what looks to be, I think, the the 2 one two, right? Which is always yeah. going to be a fun competition. For sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's, there's kind of, you can, you know, nuts and bolts to pick out, but T, uh, if you could hear us, could you, uh, please add a uh, tie segment points and, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll get to tie segment, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of open up the show with you. Um, I always appreciate you being here. And of course, uh, Patriot life always coming through heavy with the fan fund membership. So thank you so much, Patriot life. Uh, we really appreciate you being here, uh, right here on Bama football on YouTube. Always taking care of uh, people uh, right here on Bama Football on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, Ty, have a good segment, man. You guys catch me back at 9. I'll be taking your calls and uh, breaking down uh, what we learned right here from Tuscaloosa. But, uh, yeah, another uh, action-packed day. We got Coach Smoot coming on the back end at 10 uh, before we get to our, um, you know, midday points. And then, you know, look for more content coming out, uh, YouTube shorts and um, some more uh, membership-only videos right here on Bama Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys. Ty, have a great segment, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys soon. See you in a little bit, undefeated. Appreciate it, Kyle. As you guys just saw Kyle killing it, as always, we have a whole lot to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. We have got several major topics. And then Patriot Life. My man, thank you so much for the five picked subs. Honestly, at this point, and I have to be honest here, math was never my strong suit. Right. There's a reason why I was looking at law school, right? Because I'm not good at math. So I've lost count as to how many gifted that is. So thank you for all the support over here. You have been awesome. Happy you're in here. Good morning to the undefeated. As you can see on the docket, we have several things to talk about today. We have Bama Spring Ball. We have major visitors on the way. We need to talk about who's up. There were some interesting clips within some of that B-roll that I want to break down. We need to talk about it. We need to hit some chalk talk. And as always, you guys already know, if you have topics, they may as well be put on here. You guys let me know what you want to talk about, and I am going to talk about it. That's what I love here because we make this as interactive as possible. I say this every day, and of course, I'm not going to stay, stray away from it today. The two most important things that we have is health and time. You guys are giving us your time, sitting over here, hanging out with us, and interacting with us, and I am always over the moon to talk about whatever it is you guys want talked about. So you have anything, you drop it down there, and of course, we'll get into it. Ronald Thompson asks, Ty, does Bama have a chance to flip Justice Terry from Georgia? Yes. Yes, they do have a chance, Ronald. Now listen, it'd be an uphill battle. When you're talking about flipping someone from an Ohio State, from a Georgia, or even from an Alabama, right? Like there are certain schools out there that if you're trying to flip someone from there, it's an uphill battle. 
Is it doable? Sure. It's even more doable when you're one of those schools, right? Like it's much easier for Bama to flip from Georgia and Georgia to flip from Bama in theory than say a Mizzou to flip someone from Bama or Mizzou to, you guys get what I mean, right? Because you're talking about the upper echelon of university where it's like, okay, we know what we do in terms of recruiting, development, coaching, resources, NFL ability. Bama's in that category, right? Bama's in that category and Bama's been leading the charge in that category. So for Alabama, retaining Freddie Roach means that for any defensive line commit out there, you at least retain the ability to have a conversation and conversations are powerful. Relationships are massive in recruiting. Being able to retain Roach is something that I genuinely don't think we can talk enough about. Uh, It was a huge win. And for Justice Terry, he's even referred to Alabama as being like the only other school he's even interested in outside of Georgia. So does Alabama have a chance to get Justice Terry? Yes, absolutely. But we also have to understand anytime you're trying to flip guys from these upper echelon universities, you got a battle ahead of you. But that that is what makes this so much fun, in my opinion, is watching these battles. Before we dive into this, Ronald, just to kind of give you an example of, of why I love recruiting so much, and it's because of these heavyweight recruiters going after these top prospects. A few years ago, JT Tuamalau, right up there, uh, I believe at Washington, actually, deciding where he was going to go. He ended up extending his recruiting process. If I'm not mistaken, he ended up committing closer to July 4th than on National Signing Day. Um, but it was largely a battle between Alabama and Ohio State, right? I mean, and you were talking about heavyweight recruiters going after one of the best players in the nation. Really, I think the number one player in the nation. And it was an awesome battle to watch unfold. You're having Larry Johnson chip away, right? You're having Larry Johnson chip away. You're having the Alabama staff try and go, but I mean, it was, it was a ton of fun to sit on the sideline and watch, right? So going to be interesting to see anytime you have these heavyweight recruiters, you're always in for a treat from a Bama, but can Bama flip him? Yes. But listen, Bama is one of those schools. They have a shot with anybody that's willing to listen to a pitch, right? If, if someone is now, there are certainly those out there that once they commit, they shut down and they're like, no, I don't care who you are. I'm I'm where I am. That's it. Right? That's it. But if they are willing to a conversation, Alabama has a chance. Not to say they will, but they certainly have a chance. Let's get into Bama Spring Ball. That started the other day, right? That started the other day. That started yesterday. And it gives us an opportunity to see the DeBoer era begin. Now, we're not going to go heavy into this because, as you can see, we have the who's up and the chalk talk, right? So we we got a lot of topics all centered around spring ball. So we're not going to go too, too heavy. But what we do know right now is that it's a time for Alabama to begin anew, right? It's a time for Alabama to begin anew. They have had nothing but consistency for years on end now. Nick Saban's run at Alabama, I don't think will ever be replicated. To have that level of success for that many years, I don't think it will ever be replicated. Because college football, in terms of competitiveness, in terms of teams out there, it's getting more difficult. The more access these young athletes have to higher quality training, the better they get to college, the more difficult it makes the road to a national championship. Because you're playing against opponents that have, like yourself, athletes that are incredibly well trained so as the sport evolves becomes increasingly more difficult you have access to better information access to better training access to all these things but what we can say with full certainty right now is that kaylin DeBoer is absolutely up for the job there's no doubt about it from his introductory press conference where he hit something that Jarek and myself, Coach Jay and myself, really wanted him to talk about. Acknowledging the fact that, hey, I'm not from the South. I don't know the SEC recruiting landscapes, but you can bet your bottom dollar that because I don't know that, 
I'm going to be making sure that's accounted for. Jor asks, is AM coming for Greg? Uh, I saw from a, a a more credible source that it there was next to nothing about that. Um, and I can't remember. It's one of two people. It was either Ryan Fowler who tweeted about, I think it was Ryan Fowler who was saying that he didn't think that there was anything to that. Um, let me try and figure that out though, in terms of who it was that tweeted that. So I'll, uh, yes, it was Ryan Fowler. He tweeted an hour ago. Um, thank you very much, Marquita. Thank you very much. Ryan Fowler tweeted an hour ago. And I quote, once again, before we jump into this, want to give credit where it's due. It comes from Ryan Fowler. Ryan Fowler does an unbelievable job covering the tide for the game on 109 does an unbelievable job we want to make sure he gets credit for this information because it's not coming from me it's coming from once again ryan fowler and i quote he says greg is not going anywhere according to high ranking source that i spoke to yesterday i reached out to my best source i do not think this rumor has any real validity i heard some buzz last week and followed up Greg is very happy with Alabama. He wants to be here. Plus, look at what he has built in Tuscaloosa. Nate Oates has the basketball program trending in the right direction. Kalen DeBoer should do the same thing for football. Both coaches are 49 years old. Set you up for a strong future. I can't recall a time when Alabama athletics has been better than it is right now. Just take a look at all the programs, most of which are excelling at a high level. Um, And that is a credit to Greg. Um, So, that's encouraging. I understand because he has, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't his dad affiliated with Texas A&M? If if that's not, if I'm not mistaken there. But I I do 100%, and I have no, you know, high-level source on this, but one thing Ryan said in that tweet that would have been my first line of thinking, because like I said, AD for years, I thought so, Jor. I thought his, I thought his father was the AD of a and but I, I wasn't 100% sure. Thank you very much for that. Um, I, I remembered reading something about it, but I, I don't ever want to lead you guys astray or say something wrong. Um, I don't mind being wrong, but it's like with information like that, right? Like I want to be as accurate as possible. Um, and so, but I thought I had read something about that. Yes. Okay, perfect. So there is that connection. But the one thing that Ryan said that would have been the first thing that I had thought just personally, is A&M is a lot of questions. A&M is a tumultuous place. Alabama right now hasn't been. The basketball program is going in a great direction. Um, I can't say I keep up too, too much with college baseball, but you got some exciting things over there. Football is not an exciting time. And while I'd understand wanting to go and cement your legacy next to your father's i completely understand that listen um i wanted to go to law school where my father graduated college from right i wanted to go to law school where my father graduated college from so i I understand the notion of like wanting to go somewhere where you had that family tie but i also think we need to realize a and m has been chaotic to be polite if if we just want to put a blanket statement over A&M, do they have the capability? Sure, they have all the money in God's kingdom, but they have been chaotic. And sometimes when you have all the ability, but you don't have the clear direction, right? Like, you're going to get yourself in more trouble. a and has been a train wreck for years. And that's kind of the thing, Michael. Like, they have all the ability in the world. But if you don't have the direction, sometimes access to all of that can lead you further astray. Just think about that in terms of life, right? Like, yes, we're talking football here, but also think about that, what I just said, and apply that to just any anything in life. You have no direction, but you have unlimited resources. That can be incredibly problematic. Real quick. So it's either, hey, I, I go and be the guy who fixes a and who provides them structure, and listen. Listen, if you were able to do that, that would certainly be 
something to put on your resume. Someone say, train wreck, train wreck, happy you're here, my guy. Um, but why, why leave something that's in such a good state? And though the football, per- listen, job's not done, right? Like basketball's trending, but the football program just began a new era with a new coach. Right, it's job's not done. Excited to see that. So I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think he's going anywhere. Money and facilities don't always translate to championships. That's a hundred percent true, Michael. That's a hundred percent true. You have to have direction, and I think that if you could give A and M that direction, that'd be amazing. But why leave a sure thing? I think he's here to stay. So whenever we look at the Bama spring ball, we're going to have more conversations about that. We do need to have a conversation about who's visiting. Because my oh my, this week is loaded with some unbelievable visitors. So, tomorrow, tomorrow, March 6th, you have a five-star coming to town, ladies and gentlemen. Michael says, Josh Pate says A&M is a marquee job. I disagree with that. So, I also, and listen, I love Josh. Josh is the first, the first person in the industry to shout me out, recognize, and he is a great person. I can't speak enough about Josh Pate as a person. Like what he does professionally, I think he is like a, the goal, a gold standard in our industry, but him as a person, he is an unbelievable person. He has been willing to give me time to talk to me, to give me advice. I, I can't speak enough about him. I do disagree with him there because I think it's very easy to conflate what is versus what could be. And I think that sometimes we think that they're in the same realm of possibility. But what is and what could be can also be very different things. Right? What is and what could be can be very different things. A&M has the ability to be a marquee job. Why? Because of location. Right? They, the state that they're in, access to a ton of talent. You have access to the Houston market. You're in the SEC. Uh, and you have all the money in the world. You have all of the money you could ask for. But just because you have the capabilities to do something doesn't inherently make you elite. And that's where I do disagree. Right? That's, wh- that's where I do disagree um, with with it i understand the logic he's using i understand why he arrives at that conclusion but the only place where josh and i differ is i don't think that the ability to be great inherently makes one great i think greatness makes one great right like i i think that the act of being great inherently makes you great not the ability to be great and i think that there's a distinction to be had there um, but once maybe that's just a semantics argument from me, right? Like, and if so, if there are people in the undefeated saying, "Well, Ty, it sounds like that defense is super based on semantics," uh, fair, right? Fair. That's just my view on it. But I do understand the basic premise of what he's saying. But I just think that in order to be a great job, it has to be a great job. You know what I mean? Like, there are places in the world where. You, you have the ability to do a lot, but like, is the present circumstances allowing you to do a lot? And that's where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. But looking at these visitors, we have a five-star wide receiver coming to town tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Five-star wide receiver Caleb Cunningham will be in Tuscaloosa tomorrow. And I'm very interested in this. Because one thing, if you have the ability and the money to be great, then what is there besides having the right person, having the right culture, having the right culture? So let me check something. Because if I'm not mistaken... So, okay, it's like this. Here's a great example, Kelly. 
because I, I understand Josh's argument, but so me being a political scientist, right? I always think about this in terms of governance and countries. Venezuela exports a ton of oil. They have the capabilities to be a very rich country, but they are very poor, right? And like the country has been in turmoil because of lack of political direction in, in any sort of conducive to a successful manner. Uh, and so it, it's much the same, right? So you're sitting on a country that has got a, a ton of resources. You have all the resources one could want, but your present circumstances don't allow you to maximize what you could do. All right? And that's kind of me being a political scientist. That's what I always like. I always think about things in terms of like governance or like things like that, right? And so I, I always, when Josh Pate made that argument, I understood completely where he was going with it. But then I instantly thought in terms of like countries and government, and I thought of countries out there that are sitting on vast swaths of resources that could enrich their country, could make their country go from their present circumstances to something totally different, but they they lack the current capabilities to maximize those opportunities. And to me, that the, that's where the distinction is to be had, right? Like, if you don't have the proper mobilization, it's going to be very tough. It's going to be very tough. So these visitors, Caleb Cunningham, we've talked about the wide receiver recruiting for a while, how that's going to be something that I think is really fascinating to watch. Shepard is going to be a force on the recruiting trail, right? Shepard is going to be an absolute force on the recruiting trail. I, From what we've seen thus far, you have seen so many people across this high school football landscape talk about being excited for either visiting Alabama or those that came during the January visit period were very excited about what they saw from Alabama. And I've noticed a lot of wide receivers talking about the Tide. I've noticed a lot of wide receivers taking note. And if I'm not mistaken, Caleb Cunningham just went on ahead and said, Bama's wide receiver you. Now, I want you to imagine you're going and you're doing a job interview. You're, you're wanting to get hired. All right, you're wanting to get hired somewhere. If you went on record and you said, hey, this, I'm going to interview at job A, job B, job C, all of them are likely to offer me the position. Job A, to me, they're the very best in my field. They can, they can take me from where I'm at and they can put me at the top. You're probably going to be likely to go with job A. You understand like the, the, the relationship there? And Jory, you're 100% right. Cunningham was not going to put Bama in his top 10 until he met Shepard. And Stephen, you are right. You are right. Bama is NFL you. You're 100% right. You're 100% right. There's no doubt about that. Bama actually broke the record for most NFL players actively on a roster this past season and then broke it again. Broke it twice in one season. It was wild. It's incredible. But I think you all get the logic I'm putting forward here. If you wanted to go work for some company because you thought, hey, I can work there for four to five years and they are going to make me such a desirable candidate to a job market that is going to pay me exponentially more, that's where you would go. Now, I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but the fact that a five-star wide receiver wasn't looking at Bama before has acknowledged, hey, they are wide receiver you, but now I am interested because this new staff. Let's see what happens. I will say this, if you're a wide receiver, Bama currently has something on this roster that I see Alabama fans worrying about, and I could not be more opposed to that mindset. I see so much talk about the quarterback position. For those of you in the undefeated, I, I think it's no secret right now. I roll with Milrow. And that's not to say that there isn't unbelievable quarterbacks behind him. I just think that Milrow now has access to a higher quality offensive coaching staff than he ever had with a quarterback coach. I think that he has access to higher quality offensive coaches than he's ever had at any point in his career at Alabama. 
Now, notice I'm saying offensive coaches because Saban is Saban, right? The GOAT. But there's no questioning what DeBoer, what Sheridan, what some of these guys can do. There's no questioning that. And I'm very fascinated to see. But here's the flip side of that equation, ladies and gentlemen. This is where I I want to have this conversation, not from the perspective of, is there a quarterback competition? That's not where this conversation is arriving from. We're having this conversation because Jalen Milrow will find his way to the NFL in the next available period. He will be a high draft pick. Bama has to have a future option. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you look in that quarterback room, you got a former five-star in Ty Simpson. You got Dylan Lonergan, who I think is really been impressive from what I've heard, right? From what I've heard. Lonergan has been unbelievably impressive. And then you got Austin Mack, who had he not reclassified, he'd have been pushing for five-star status. Let's see exactly where Austin Mack ended up after reclassifying. He was number 73 in the nation. If we actually look at 24-7 sports rankings, he was number 73 in the nation as a prospect. After reclassifying. A top 10 quarterback. After reclassifying. Let's see this quarterback class, right? So who knows what he would have been? Who knows what he would have been had he stayed in his original class? Point being, point being, with this conversation, this conversation isn't to create a quarterback battle. Not it. My point in having this conversation is Caleb Cunningham is a 2025 recruit. Jalen Milrow will be making some NFL team unbelievably happy in 12 months. Just a little over. You get my point. You get my point. In 13 months. Jalen Milrow will be making some NFL team unbelievably happy that they just were able to draft him. So what does Alabama have in the quarterback room for the future? A ton of talented options. And that's why I've seen so much conversation about the quarterback room, and I'm like, okay, but I think we're looking at this wrong. I think we're looking at this wrong. Alabama has got a very talented quarterback room from top to bottom. And what that allows them to do is go to a Caleb Cunningham and say, listen, man, one, you're going to be coached by DeBoer and Shepard and all these guys. Remember, DeBoer was a wide receiver now. Remember that. He was a wide receiver. Not only that, not only that, ladies and gentlemen, Brian Ellis, who Alabama just hired as the tight ends coach, he just put together a passing attack that was a top passing attack in the nation. He was also at Western Kentucky when Bailey Zapp was there, and Bailey Zapp threw for 5,000 yards and 62 touchdowns. He was the passing game coordinator. So you have all the ability in the world to get successful through the passing game. You can now go to a Caleb Cunningham and say, listen, man, we're going to excel in quarterback this year, but when you walk into Tuscaloosa, if you decide to come here, if you decide to come here, we got four different quarterbacks. Who do you want? Who do you want? We got four different quarterbacks in here in waiting that would be starters at other places in college football. Who do you want? Seriously, who do you want? You want Austin Mack? You want Ty Simpson? You want Dylan Lonergan? Oh, by the way, we're also pushing for Deuce Knight, Juju Lewis. Who do you want? That's where I want to have the conversation from, ladies and gentlemen. Not to raise that there is a quarterback competition, but to point out for recruiting, not only do these wide receivers, because let's be honest, Coach Shepard was a home run hire. And I know that that phrase can get watered down because it's used so often. Shepard was a home run hire, period. Point blank. Point blank. Uh, Joe Juwan says, I don't know much uh, about him. So he is, and I assume you're talking about Shepard, but maybe Brian Ellis, just because the the timing of it. Um, Shep has had unbelievable production. He is someone who, you, you listen to how Ryan Williams talked about him. Ryan Williams met him for less than, Ryan Williams had a relationship with Shepard for a week. 
that superseded the relationship he had cultivated at his father's alma mater, where he's a legacy. Not alma mater, uh, the DB coach. Gotcha. Mo Linguist or Colin Hitchler. We can break down both of them, jo Joe Juan. No, no doubt about it. We can quickly do so. Um, we'll start with Mo Linguist. Mo Linguist, the cornerbacks coach for the Alabama Crimson Tide, came to Alabama by way of Buffalo, where he was the head coach. And first off, anytime you can get a head coach to take a position coach role, not even a coordinator, a position coach role, one, great hire, but two, it speaks to the brand of Alabama. And I always want to highlight that because we had so many naysayers out there saying Bama doesn't have a brand. Well, if they don't have a brand, then how come they're getting head coaches to come and be cornerback coaches? Obviously, they have a brand, right? Neither here nor there. But one of the things that I think you need to know, Carrie, about Mo Linguist, as a recruiter and as a coach, when he was at Texas A&M, they, they really were high on what he was able to do there, working with those defensive backs. He's from DFW. He's from right here in Dallas, Texas, right down the road from where I'm currently sitting. On top of that, he played in Waco and then coached in Houston at Texas A&M, meaning not only did he, you know, play college football, he has coached or he has ties to the two biggest recruiting markets in the state of Texas, DFW and Houston. Thank you very much for the $20, Carrie. Thank you very much for, for that donation. And really, thank you for asking the question because it's a great question to ask, right? There's a lot of new faces. Let's get to know them. Uh, that way we can form opinions about this staff and get excited or, or start having questions that we want to see answered. But thank you so much for the $20 donation. Thank you for rocking out and giving us your time because that that is incredibly valuable. But carrying on the conversation, that's what I love about Linguist. The fact that he has worked in the SEC. He was with Texas A&M. He recruited quite successfully for Texas A&M, might I add. If I can look up real quickly about his recruiting at Texas A&M, he got them some recruits that they were very high on, such as a Jalen Jones, a five-star safety, a Dylan Wright, a very highly rated four-star wide receiver, right? A Leon O'Neal Jr., he was instrumental in the recruitment of Leon O'Neill Jr. as well. So, I mean, the guy was able, Rashad Bateman, right? I, I mean, so he, he's he been able to do some recruiting. He has the five-star under him. He's a young guy, and he was just a head coach. So that's one that I think is super interesting. That's one that I think is super interesting, Kerry. Now, if we talk about the safeties coach, Coach Colin Hitchler, this is one that I am really excited. Jermaine, I completely agree with you. I'm very excited for Coach Hitchler. few reasons why, Kerry. First and foremost, he was the safeties coach, and Cincinnati really gives him a lot of credit for working with that Cincinnati secondary that included Black and uh, Sauce Gardner. He, Coach Hitchler was a secondary coach in that Cincinnati secondary that ended up going to the playoffs. And while he was the safeties coach, if you read into what Cincinnati said about him, they gave him a ton of credit. They gave him a lot of credit for what was going on in that secondary. From Cincinnati, he goes to Wisconsin. And at Wisconsin, there's something he did carry that I do find compelling. He was rated as a top 15 recruiter in the nation. Top 15 recruiter in the nation. Kobe Bryant, thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, you're, you're right, Drew. It wasn't black. It was Bryant. I, I that, that was my fault. You're 100% right, Drew. I was wrong. Thank you very much for that. I, I don't know why I, I said neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. But yes, thank you very much for that. It, it, was, uh, it was Kobe Bryant. Was really good. Yes, yes. They were a really good DB duo. And that's part of the reason when Alabama played them, I know a lot of people out there were like, oh, Alabama didn't beat them by a thousand points. Yeah, because you were in a 3-3-5 and Alabama just had to run it down your throat. Schematics make fights, right? Styles make matchups. If you're going to give us a light front, we're going to run it down your throat. Why are we going to test your secondary when that's what you're showing us you're strengthening? Why am I going to do that? I'm not. And even then, Bryce had a beautiful strike, a beautiful throw on that game which surprises nobody, neither here nor there. But Coach Hitchler, Kerry, 
at Wisconsin was a top 15 recruiter in the nation, was responsible for like seven of their recruits in this past class. But if you can be a top 15 recruiter at Wisconsin, I'm interested to see what you can do at Alabama. So that's kind of a very light introduction into your new defensive backs coaches. Um, and on top of that, yesterday it was announced that Alabama is bringing in Chuck Morrell as just kind of an analyst. Chuck Morrell was the defensive coordinator at Washington, but specifically worked with the secondary of Washington. And listen, that Washington defense, that's not going to work. I talk about this all the time. What does it take to win a national championship? Well, Carrie, oddly enough, Whenever USC played their first game, I looked into their defensive rankings and because someone on my channel asked me, what does it take to win a national championship? Could USC win one this year? And this is week zero when they're playing. Immediately after that game, I made a video saying, no, USC is not going to win a national championship this year. And the reason is simple, because there's only been three defenses outside the top 25 defenses, or I'm sorry, outside the top 30 scoring defenses in the nation win a national championship since 2000. Only three. Only three defenses have ranked outside that top 30 and won a national championship. 2019 LSU, 2014 Ohio State, and then the Auburn Cam Newton team. That's it. That's it. Only three. The reason I say that is because even though that Washington defense wasn't great, and that's not what you need, you can't bring that wa As Tink says, that Washington secondary was not the issue. I'm not saying they were a world-beating secondary. Not my argument for one second. But what I will say is if your defense is really, really bad in run support, like, and their Washington defense was terrible in stopping the run, you're putting more stress on your secondary because they inevitably have to pull resources and have to be aware that, hey, that running back might make it through the front six, and then it's on me. So, like, you know, it's one of them, but the fact that you get Morell in as an analyst, very interested there. Let's talk about some other recruits because we talked about Caleb Cunningham. We talked about Caleb Cunningham, and that's going to be a good one. But... As we have been asked about a defensive back, there are some interesting defensive backs coming in. If I'm not mistaken, you got some four-star defensive backs coming in this weekend. You have Dijon Lee, who is going to be pushing for a five-star status, defensive back out of the state of California. Carey, who is going to be coming in for a visit at some point. At some point. Um, because he's very high, has the relationship with the staff. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's a lot of exciting things. Carrie, thank you so much for the ten dollar donation. Saying I've been watching you from the beginning. You've been grinding. Hey man, I just I'm I'm just lucky that people care to hear my rambling on college football. I'm I'm just blessed to be in this position. Both from all of you, um, from all of you that support over here, from all of you that support over on my channel at Around the Table Sports. To Kyle, to T, uh, very thankful to all of you. Ronald says, can we still get Jamie French? Listen, I'm not going to say no because it's Alabama and it's Coach Shepard. It's this offense. And I think that wide receivers, like, you should at least hear the pitch. That's kind of like why whenever Ryan Williams recommitted to Alabama, I have a, a friend that makes Texas content. And I think he makes unbelievably high quality content. Uh, someone I really respect. Someone I really respect. In fact, every time Alabama and Texas would play, we'd sit on the phone for three to four hours at a time um, going through both rosters for his breakdown video. And whenever Ryan Williams recommitted, he called me and he was just like, yeah, that would have been a mistake if they didn't get Ryan Williams. Not on Bama's part, but on Williams' part. He's like, with y'all's current staff, like I don't understand how every wide receiver – isn't like flocking to Bama. And this is coming from someone who has Sark, right? And he's like, yeah, I get it. We're going to get our looks of wide receivers. But he's like, you guys. And this is also somebody, ladies and gentlemen, that when I was texting him about Texas versus Washington, and I said, hey, I think y'all's interior defensive presence is going to, to win this game. He hit me back with, it should, but DeBoer scares me. This is, like I said, this is someone who uh, who I definitely respect their opinion. 
a, a friend of mine makes great content. In fact, some of you may have even watched his breakdowns when Alabama and Texas played because he gave great breakdowns. Um, and yeah, yeah, even he was calling like when I said, hey, I think that y'all's interior, Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat are going to make it really tough on that interior of Washington's offensive line. And I think it's a great offensive line for Washington. But with y'all's running game and your ability to wear down that line through four quarters, I think you're going to have the edge. I think you're going to, and he hit me back with, yeah, what you're saying logically makes sense. He says, but DeBoer scares me and Penix scares me. He's like, because when those two are involved, you you got to fight on your hands. And that's where I was like, okay, so you're really, really, I was high on DeBoer at the time, but that's when I started almost taking a second step back and saying, am I high enough on DeBoer? Where someone who I respect their opinion, who just got done doing a breakdown on Washington is saying, this guy terrifies me. This guy, yeah, we have more talent. This guy terrifies me. Texas Homer is the channel, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Great friend of mine. Actually uh, lived in Denton with me. Um, we didn't live together, but just right down the road. And he does breakdowns of all the Texas Longhorn opponents recruiting. He's a Texas Longhorns content creator. But uh, with me just making general college football content, we hooked up and hooked up on some content. And uh, every time Texas would play Bama, because I'm a big Bama fan, he would call me and we would talk. Um, professional certified hater. You lived in, I live in Denton. Um, I don't live like in the direct vicinity of Denton Ryan professional. I live right off of, I, I just live near UNT. Um, and Ryan's kind of on the other side, but the way Denton is districted is weird. My wife teaches in Ryan's district, right? So I, you, in all technicality, I guess I do kind of have an affiliation with Ryan's district by where we live, but I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so just because of the location, but I know my wife does teach in a Denton Ryan in Denton Ryan's district. So whenever we talk about who's up, right, this kind of who's up and chalk talk, they can go together because we got visitors coming. We, we talked about Caleb Cunningham. We also have Juju Lewis coming in for a visit this weekend. Juju Lewis coming in for a visit this weekend. That's going to be one we have to watch. That's a quarterback this staff really wants. Travis Smith Jr. coming in for a visit. Very talented wide receiver. Very talented wide receiver. And Alabama is really starting to push for a linebacker, Luke Metz. Watch Luke Metz. Someone they're really starting to push for. I actually got a text from someone not even affiliated from Alabama that does content for a totally other team in the SEC saying, hey, y'all are heating up for Luke Metz, and uh, I think he really likes the prospect of playing for Alabama, and I think he really likes this new staff. All right. So it's really starting to shape up um, for back in the top 10. I think Alabama will have a top 10 class. Is that the kid from New Mexico? No, no, he's not from New Mexico. I, for, I think he's from Mississippi. I think Metz is from Mississippi. You're right, George. Luke Metz has great film. I'm sorry, Metz is from Georgia, not Mississippi. Metz is from Georgia. There's someone else from Mississippi. Or, I just released a video yesterday talking about a string of recruits from Mississippi. So I've had Mississippi on the brain from Cunningham to... Dalen Wright, right? Like it's just, or Ackland Deer, not Dalen Wright. I'm all over the place right now looking at recruits. Ackland Deer out there, um, but yes, Jor, hundred percent. Mets has great film. How he's a three star, I don't know. He has great film, and I've had, I've had friends that make content that are really in-depth in the recruiting world kind of hit me up saying, hey, I think he really likes what what Bama could be pitching, and he just picked up the offer. Thank you so much for the $3 super sticker, Fred. Stevie, fire away. I may not have the answer for you, but 
I'm certainly down for the conversation, but by all means, fire away. Don't count out Juju Lewis, 100%, 100%. Fred, thank you very much for that $3 super sticker, by the way. That means the world. Stevie, as you're typing out that question, we're going to kind of go into some chalk talk, who's up, and we're going to kind of go back into this first topic, Bama spring ball. What about Zion Grady, Ronald Thompson asks. I think Alabama still has a chance with Zion Grady. He wanted to be here. Yes, he is decommitted. It is up to the staff to continue chipping away. It is up to the staff to continue chipping away. Is it an uphill battle? Possibly. Possibly. But it is what it is. What about Deuce Knight? Deuce Knight is another one. Listen, there's a lot of great quarterbacks this class. It's it's always a great place to be to be pushing for two quarterbacks that you love or multiple quarterbacks that you love than having to look for a quarterback. How about our yeah, listen, it's one of those things where I understand like, oh, well, I want to focus on the season, but it you know, that's not my call to make. It, you know what I mean? Like I'm not that's that's not my call to make. Who do you believe is next to commit? That's a great question, AJ. That's a great question. There's a few different names I think could pull the trigger. I think there's a few different wide receivers I think could pull the trigger. That's a tough one, AJ. That's a tough one. I'm in between three or four names on that. How do you think EA would be able to include college football greats who didn't play in the NFL? Players like... um, So, Stevie, the way that I think... Yeah, exactly. Ultimate team. Ultimate team. You already know how greedy EA is, right? You already know what's going to happen. They're going to have that ultimate team, and I think that's where you can include like the legends section and have all-time greats in college football, regardless of what they did in the NFL, regardless of what happened after, because we're talking college football. And so I think that's where you could see some of those things, and I think that could be really, really cool. Campus legends. Right? Like they do that for Madden. So they'll certainly, certainly do that for NCAA, I would imagine. Man, Zion got a helicopter visit from Kirby. Maybe we just need to give him the helicopter. That's a great question, Dino. I actually don't know the answer to this question. Do legends get paid too? I don't know the question to that. I have no idea. That's a great question. Do you think Bama has in an interest in KJ Lacey? I would hope so. I would hope they're interested in K. I think KJ Lacey is very talented. I would hope they have an interest in him. Now that that doesn't mean that oh well KJ Lacey has to be your number one quarterback. But like, I would hope they have an interest in him. He's right there in Saraland. I think he's very very gifted. Um, I know they typically like a bit more height, but I think he's very gifted. So, you know, how interested, that's anybody's question. That's not for me to answer. I'm not on the staff, right? And, I, and I'm not going to pretend to know that. But if you're saying, should they be interested? I think so. I think so. He's very talented. Every time I watched KJ Lacey play, I was just thinking like, man, that guy can be a wizard in the pocket. Very fun to watch. When am I going live on my channel? Uh, I don't know, Juwan. Probably next week. We're probably going to jump back into the string of lives next week. We've been having a lot going on. So we're probably going to jump back into that next week. As we're ending out, though, I did want to talk about some who's up chalk talk as it relates to Bama Spring Ball. Because as we were watching the B-roll yesterday, there were two guys I saw that stood out. And listen, this is this is armchair quarterback stuff right here. So don't read into this. This is just Ty's opinion. All right. One. Kendrick Law is a monster. I can't wait to see what this new offense does with Kendrick Law. But two, ladies and gentlemen, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. I'm always biased towards the guys that come from Texas. I, I can't help it. I just really like, I want all of these guys to succeed. I want all of these guys that, that sacrifice their time, that work hard to go live out their dreams. That would make me happier than anything, whether they commit to Alabama or not. I want all these guys that work hard, that put their head down and are trying to better their lives to, to achieve their dreams, no matter where they go. 
Jalen Hale, ladies and gentlemen, I think is in for a Hemothy type season. I think with Shepard, Jalen Hale was already pushing as a true freshman last year. With this new staff, I think he could be in for a Hemothy type season. Or at least I hope so. That, right? Like that's 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 also me hoping that he could be. But let's 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 look at the reasons why. Right? Let's look at the reasons why my take right there isn't a misplaced take, in my opinion. One. One, he was pushing as a true freshman. He was pushing in a wide receiver room where, let's be quite honest, ladies and gentlemen, Burton was doing his thing. Burton was really good last year. Really good last year. He did his thing. There were several guys on that team that had more experience than Hale. And Hale was pushing for reps. He was getting his. Two, I think he's got the size, the physicality, and the athletic ability that this offense looks for. And I also think that when you talk about wide receivers, you're also looking for stylistic differences to maximize all of your wide receivers on roster. Ooh, James, that's a good one. Emmanuel Henderson, that's certainly a good one. I like that one. I like that one a lot. He's got a lot of ability. He's got a lot of ability. Love that. But with Hale, I, I think he's got that mix of ability that you can put him out there and allow the stylistic differences you have in this wide receiver room to be maximized. Fred, thank you for the $5 super sticker. Doubling down today means the world. Not only that you're you're donating, allowing us to do what we do, but also that you're spending your time over here on Bama Football and YouTube with Kyle Henderson with us. That means the world, Fred. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Steven, you know what? This is this is probably the correct answer. Like if we're really getting into logical analysis, which is what I, you know, what I love to do, this is a great answer. The best taker will be depending on the weekly matchup. 100%. 100%. No doubt about it. But if you have stylistic differences in your wide receiver room where you have one guy who like a Jalen Hale He's got so much ability, but then you have maybe like a, a Cole Adams, right? Another name who you might as well call him Slotty Pippen. I got to see him play up there at Oklahoma when he was healthy. And he works from the slot and he is nasty from the slot. But you get what I mean, right? Whenever you have all these stylistic differences that you want, if you can really fill that out in your actual room, you've got something to work with. Bama has an embarrassment of riches at the wide receiver position, ladies and gentlemen, and I think Shepard is going to come in here, look around, and say, oh, I've got options. <laughs> I've, I've got options. I don't have one. I've got options. I don't see any of the wide receivers. I think Bond would have been. He could have been, Dino. I, listen, I think Bond has got a ton of ability. Um, I think that Ryan Williams offers the same type of speed Bond does, right? I think Ryan Williams offers you that. I think Kendrick Law isn't far behind, but I also think Ryan Williams, he's going to have a, a higher upside, right? His route running, his Bond in high school as a junior in high school is already displaying some of the things that are just like really intricate, like attacking the outside shoulder, of a defensive back, and the second that defensive back turns his head, he cuts back inside and attacks the inside shoulder. And that's just textbook. And you're seeing it from his sophomore year of high school on, like really doing heady textbook moves out there as a wide receiver. Kyle, there's a reason why, personally, I've been so excited for Ryan Williams. And listen, Bond was that guy. Bond was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ryan Williams gives you that same speed. He ran a 10-2-5. And I think he's his route running is already super deep. He already displays the understanding of how to attack defensive backs leverage. Do you do you guys realize how crazy this is? This is something that I was following someone who breaks down the draft, and they were breaking down Xavier Worthy. And one of the things that they loved about him was that he understood how to attack the defensive back shoulders and how to attack their leverage. Mm. Ryan Williams, we can do the same thing with him, and he hasn't played a down of college football yet. Mm -hmm. He's different. He's different. Kyle, happy you're back in here, man. I was, I was getting, I was getting juiced up talking about Ryan Williams. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I think it's it's easy to get juiced up when you talk about the wide receiver room for sure. Um, you look to all the components uh, that Alabama has. I mean, that's a lot of firepower. I think they have more firepower at the wide receiver position than they did uh, last year, which is kind of crazy to think about because I'm not one of those uh, type of people. It's like the next is always better than the last. But in this particular case, I think you have a lot of uh, components to certainly work with. I think Ryan Williams is going to punch way above his belt. It's crazy to think he just turned 17. You're talking about a guy who won Mr. Football <laughs> two years in a row. This is a first been three. Yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you. Great point. So think about this, Ryan. Where were you at 16 years old in your life, <laughs> right? And where were you at 17 years old in your life? And Probably in line for a McGriddle. That, that's what I'm saying. And like this guy's winning Mr. Football not once but what twice. And the great thing about it so far, from what we've heard from the coaches. And it looks like the coaches are pretty much straight shooters for the most part, saying that, um, you know, uh, this guy can pick up things schematically at, you know, at a glance. And that's something that you got to be excited about. With that said, I mean, look at all the guys that are coming back. I mean, Kobe Prentice, Kendrick Law. Um, there's, I mean, Emmanuel Henderson, who really hasn't had an opportunity. Jeremy Bernard, who joins the team as well uh, from Washington. Um, Caleb Odom, who is now making the transition from tight end to wide receiver. I mean, the, the list kind of Jalen Hell, who kind of so there's so many components. There's a lot of firepower within that room. I think it's going to be amazing to see kind of the the players that rise this spring, but uh, the players that continue to um, you know rise up as we continue to go into August, where you really see your position battles. I think now is kind of an early test, but August is really when the position battles start. Um, but in, in terms of like a freshman starting at wide receiver, Ryan Williams, uh, I love um, Kyle came in talking like he was there the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that's how we do it, man. We just kind of pick up and start rolling. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for joining. I love it. I, I can't wait to see him, but I'm not going to lose sight of the the players that are, you know, here in springtime that are already here because Ryan Williams will get here later, which is going to be even more impressive because um, the summer enrollees, usually they're a little bit behind in terms of the terminology, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Ryan Williams comes in and he's just balling out from the jump. Um, we've talked about, you know, situational, uh, you know, formations where you have a trips out. I remember, I think it was Coach Smook who was drawing up like he had Caleb Odom, Ryan Williams, and Kobe Prentice as a trips. And then on the outside, you have like Kendrick Law or Jeremy Bernard or something like that. It was In like, that formation, he was accounting for Odom as a tight end. So that, now you can even hack that formation more to uh -huh. where you could put Danny Lewis there at that yeah. time and then still have Odom out there to maximize super size with super athleticism. I mean, it gets freaky. Like a frog with a mustache. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so it's exciting to see these guys um, start to get their first practice. And um, I love the footage, as I showed earlier, of Danny Lewis, the big tight end. Um, how are they going to utilize these tight ends? And, you know, when they do have 12 personnel, which is two tight ends, how are they going to look when they have, you know, I don't know, one or two running backs in the back? And one of the questions that I was going to ask, maybe I'll get an opportunity to, to talk to Coach Kalen DeBoer uh, more in depth or, you know, whenever, you know, my time comes to talk to him or whenever that is. Um, but I wanted to ask, I think sometimes when we think about this Washington offense, sometimes we're like all of these wide receivers and just, you know, quarterback's going to throw for 4,000 yards. But usually um, in his offense, he's always had a running back that ate. And when you have a, a player like Justice Haynes and when you have um, Jam Miller and Richard Young, I mean, all of those guys, you know, should certainly be impactful uh, this year. Don't forget about the young freshman that, that came on board as well. So, um, I like where they're at, and I know it's only one practice down, but it was, certainly was exciting to get to hear from Coach Kalen DeBoer yesterday in his press conference. And he's such an eloquent speaker, and I think that he, um, you know, he doesn't beat around the bush for the most part. I know he just got here, but I thought he did a really great job yesterday answering the questions as thorough as he could. And um, he went in depth. I mean, Coach Saban, um, you know, was uh, pretty much the same way. Um, you know, yesterday, I think Kalen DeBoer was like, he went like 15 minutes or something like that which is cool for the first uh, practice. And then um, kind of heads up, there's no practice today. So it'll kind of be our usual schedule. We'll cruise through the day and then we'll have our evening coverage. And um, and then uh, tomorrow we'll have open practice opportunity. So for our media uh, here in Tuscaloosa, we'll be able to view a segmented amount of footage. What does that mean? I don't know. I mean, this is all new. Honestly, everybody is like, we don't know if it's going to be 20 minutes 10 minutes, it could be 15 minutes. And then after that, we'll upload that footage and then we'll come back. And um, at the end of practice, we will have um, interview opportunities that will be 
um, I think inside the Malmore um, indoor facility. Um, and those will kind of be breakout sessions, what they call. So uh, we'll keep you posted on all that. And we'll have those interviews uh, for you here, right here on Bama football on YouTube. So um, that's how we're rolling. What what else, uh, Ty? Was there any other questions that, or, you know, that any other things that stood out uh, just from the, the press conference or, you know, that you might have observed from like the footage or photos or whatever? So I talked about Jalen Hale. And mm. I think he is going to be in for what I deem to be a Hemothy type of year, right? Mm. His name isn't Timothy, so we're going to dub him Hemothy <laughs> because I think he's going to go out there and attack defenses. And especially when I start looking at the stylistic differences um, that the offense possesses in terms of their wide receivers, I just think it can get super nasty. Now, one thing I do want to direct the undefeated to, ladies and gentlemen, Kyle made a great point earlier, right? Talking about the running game. And how if he gets the opportunity, he wants to talk to DeBoer about that. But until Kyle gets that opportunity, and it's coming, we don't worry about that. Coach Sean and I, we just had a video come out right here on this <laughs> very channel, kind of giving you all a little taster of what we believe the running game could look like. If you haven't checked <laughs> that out, after you watch Kyle's segment, after you watch Scoops or Smook's segment, Go check out that video with Coach Sean and I. We broke down how DeBoer truly does change his offensive styles a little bit to match his personnel and what that looked like at Washington. Mm. Until Kyle gets the opportunity to have an in-depth conversation with him, don't worry. Bama Football on YouTube already has you covered for some of those conversations. Yeah. Be sure to check that out. Yeah, awesome, man. I uh, I appreciate it, man. Um, and good segment, man. I mean, you uh, you always crush it right here on Bama Football News. We appreciate it. And, um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see what we can – what's in store on Wednesday and um, on Friday as well. Because um, Friday will be another opportunity to hear from – I think it's the defense uh, – the defensive players and the defensive coaches – on uh friday and then they will go on spring break but there's of course a lot of recruiting activity um ty before we go man um who are you most looking forward to seeing or kind of like hearing from from like the, a recruiting perspective and i think uh is it uh is it, who is it rico scott is uh in town rico this scott. weekend as well right he's i mean he's already signed sold and delivered but i mean he's he's going to be here in tuscaloosa this weekend as well yeah listen rico scott was recruited by the old staff you know what I mean? It, it is one of those, the new staff still recruiting him. However, Kyle, I just got done talking about it. Mm -hmm. I think if you're a wide receiver, you're lining up to play for this staff. In fact, I had a Texas content creator who I really respect basically hit me up when Ryan Williams was looking at coming back yeah. to visiting Alabama. And he was like, I don't understand how Ryan Williams, like Bama's the best option right now. And he's like, it's either mm -hmm. Texas or Bama because he doesn't doesn't trust exactly what Hugh Freeze is going to do at Auburn, which Bama fans, we can all agree with that. But in terms of the future, the coaches I'm most interested in, Kyle, it's going to be two. Mm -hmm. Mo Linguist, Colin Hitchler. And the reason is simple. Mm -hmm. It's because Bama is coming from a time period where they had Charles Kelly coaching safety Nick Saban coaching defensive backs, T. Rob back there. You had elite recruiters back there in that secondary. I mean, Charles mm -hmm. Kelly was consistently a top 10 recruiter in the nation. T. Rob, a top 10 recruiter. Mm -hmm. And that's not even, mm -hmm. Nick Saban wasn't even listed, but he would have been the number one recruiter in the nation every single year. How do you replicate that? Yeah. I love the coaches. Yep. I'm interested to see the recruiting at that position in particular. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, can't can't wait to uh, see what the coaches can do. Um, you know, and not with the, only with the players' development, but also recruiting. And I think this weekend will be a good uh, opportunity to hear from them. But a uh, great great segment, man. You always always kill it. And thank you, uh, fam, undefeated, and uh, for supporting Ty when he's on. He does a really great job. We love him in this leadoff spot. He's been um, he's been doing a great job. So uh, we appreciate you, Ty, and um, you know. We, we, we're we happy that you're on here, man, and um, great segment, man. Thank you, as always, for giving me the opportunity, Kyle. Thank you, everybody in the Undefeated. I will see you all tomorrow where we have practice to look forward to, and I can't wait for a Thursday because we have more practice stuff to discuss. So yep. exciting week ahead of us, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you tomorrow. Until next time, as always, roll tide. All right. Take it easy, Ty. Ty Hayes, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you guys being here. What's up? My name is Kyle Henderson of Bama Football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys rocking with me uh, this morning right here on Bama Football on YouTube. We have uh, T. 
behind the glass as well. What's up, T? Say good morning to everybody. Good morning, Undefeated. There's that voice that everybody loves. You got T in the background. Um, I'm going to talk about some photos that you probably haven't seen just yet. Uh, maybe you have, but we're going to kind of go in depth about some of these photos, and then I'm going to take your calls uh, right here on Bama Football on YouTube. But first, a uh, word from our sponsor right here on Bama Football on YouTube, and we still have to get um, his his sponsorship graphic added, but Demetrius Maynard um, is a hell of a sponsor for us behind the scenes, and um, he contributed and um, helps the wheels go round and round here at Bama Football on YouTube. So we're going to get his sponsor added as well. So Demetrius, we love you. We appreciate you. Uh, but a quick word from my sponsors, and then we're going to break this down, and then I'll take your calls right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Be back in a minute. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code LPR for special Bamo football pricing up to 20% off. Also, go to the rogueshop.com. Use the promo code Bamo. You get legal CBD. For me personally, I like the topical oil. You know how intense my workouts are, right? So I like the topical oil. I like to rub that on my back, whatever, after those cinder blocks. So go to their website, cruise down, look through their website, and uh, definitely check out rogueshop.com. And like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is BAMA. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 cents a day. How do you do this? Make sure you're logged into your account. This is on a computer. You can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership. Once you click membership, you can see different options. You can see an upgrade button right there to the right. If you want to go through the different levels, we have fan funder videos from the staff right here at Bama football on YouTube. Very easy to navigate. Let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama football on YouTube. And of course, if you want to rock that undefeated gear, Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Fam, we appreciate you guys supporting the product right here at Bama Football on YouTube. Let's dive right into it. Let's kind of look at uh, these photos in full. T, you can take uh, down. Uh, actually, that this is fine. The the overlay is fine. want to keep our sponsors up there. Um, and the call in line is open, 205-850-1994. I'm going to uh, start off my segment by talking about some of these photos that have come in from the University of Alabama. Um, so the, the player that you have on the left, and this is, I kind of went through in detail and sometimes it's hard to see who the players are. So what I did was I have the new roster, which was updated yesterday, by the way. So if you're out there, the best way to do this, by the way, is to go onto Alabama's official roster. See, this is, this is important as well. Cause we probably need a, a new printout of the roster. Go to Alabama's official roster, rolltie.com and go through the roster, like where you can see like the actual player cards and the bios. Up at the top right, click print. And when you click print, it'll bring out all of the players um, by number. And it's really easy just to kind of see, you know, from the numbers from like, you know, now zero in Deontay Lawson all the way down to 99, whoever that is. So that's a good way to check out um, the photos and, and the numbers um, as you continue to learn more about the players and who's what number is who uh, going forward. So um, from the detail, um, I can see right here at the center position. And this isn't, I don't know if this is first team, second team, third team. I'm just talking about the players right now. That's it. So what you have right here on the left is James Brockemeyer. Now, clearly James Brockemeyer is a center here at the University of Alabama, part of the Brockemeyer family, right? You had Tommy Brockemeyer who came here as a five-star and James Brockemeyer. I don't know if he was a three-star, four-star, whatever it was. It doesn't even matter. Uh, but he's still on the roster here at the University of Alabama and fighting for that center position along with Parker Brailsford. So this is a photo of uh, James Brockemeyer right here on the center. I don't know who is on the right. I have to kind of look to it uh, more in depth. Does anybody know? Th this is I, I know all the other photos coming up. But if we could do some detective work undefeated, um, I would really appreciate you guys. James, I appreciate the compliments inside the comment box. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know who this is. Um, so if we could do some detective work right here on this prospect who is in the center of your screen, I would really appreciate that. All right. See, we can can we get the detective work going in the undefeated? All the other photos you're about to see, I know who they are. But I couldn't figure it out. 
on this one who it is. So, uh, fam, if you could help me out, I'd appreciate that. Undefeated. You're saying it's Tyler Booker? Is that Tyler Booker? Does it look like? Because we have another photo of Tyler Booker. I just can't see the other one. Um, George pretty spot on. Um, and uh, Rogue Shop is spelled wrong in the overlay, T. So we'll update that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nicole Bama Princess. Love all the eyes. So it looks like it's Booker. Okay, cool. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we'll update uh, the sponsor overlay. Thank you, Nicole. Appreciate you. Okay. Um, all good. All right. Here's a good photo of Coach Kalen. T, we finally have more photos for you to use of Coach Kalen. I know. That was getting crazy, right? <laughs> like, because we need him in Alabama gear. And there's like, I don't know, four pictures, I think. Yeah, no, we didn't have a, a lot of uh, pictures to work with, but now uh, we have plenty of photos. So here's Coach Kelly Board. How do you guys, you know what? I personally like, I, I mean, what do you want to call it? A, a baseball hat, whatever it is. This is a, I like this hat. I think this hat is probably going to fly off the shelves, to be honest. Thumbs up if you like this hat, fam. Um, I love this hat. I actually like to wear, <clears throat> I, I like to wear hats uh, backwards. Um, and I don't, this is, I like this hat a lot. Um, I know it's not, you know, Coach Saban's uh, normal hat, but this, I like this. I like the whole gear. So here's some new. You have, you have that hat. I, I was like, JA, JA has it. All right. I think a lot of people do, but it looks like it says something on the top of it too, like right on the, on the, um, right on the top of that brim. I don't know if it's like a Nike swim symbol or what. I don't know. Is it the sticker? Yeah, it's still it's on the there. Sticker, I think. No, no I, I think it looks like Nike I think swoosh. it's a Nike swoosh, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. That's weird. <laughs> yeah but i like it I, I like that hat and those are easy hats to wear like during this time when you wear it and it's you know you sweat i'm sure he has a, a million of them but um so this is like his attire that he's wearing he has the whistle and you know what was interesting yesterday and i'll pull up his press conference as well uh during my segment but he was also talking about helmet communication and i brought this up on um my you know the quick opening segment with Ty. So think about who was talking about this. And this was Coach Saban during the Rose Bowl when he was asked about Jim Harbaugh and sign stealing. And he was like, listen, I'm not too worried about it. And I think going forward, he would like to see um, helmet communications implemented. And now this spring, what, three months after that, we're doing helmet communication. They were literally practicing this yesterday with the quarterbacks. Um, really amazing to see, to be honest. So um, really like um, the fact that they're doing that and that they are already experimenting with that. He said, though, that with the supply and the demand of all of the colleges now needing that, that the um, there's a little bit of some limitations on which quarterbacks have that. And he said that sometimes the volume was a little bit too high. So imagine from like a technical standpoint, having to, you know, fine tune all those small pieces. I don't know. It's pretty interesting to think about, but I love it. We're, I mean, you're going to get a two minute warning, right? Helmet communication. This is like the NFL. Here we go. The only problem is, is more commercials. I think it's going to be last year. I felt that the games were fast and there were so many commercials. It was crazy. Um, are we taking spring break off? Um, no, we're not. T's like, when are we going to go off T? <laughs> never <laughs> so look i get it we have to you have to let your hair down and enjoy life and the months that we cover spring football they're going to vary so for example like may and june those are those are low months you know we might you know open in the morning and go in the evening time or recruiting or news as it happens during spring break we are going to go live every morning t and i are going to the beach um on Friday, but we're going to be reporting from the beach, like having the show from the beach. So you're still going to get your regularly um, scheduled shows um, along with your uh, talent. And I think that, um, you know, that's how we're going to conduct spring break and the team will have spring break as well. So we'll have coverage uh, this week through Friday with the team's interviews, and then uh, we'll go on spring break. And in fact, the team is off up until March 19th. So um, I'm going to be playing golf hundred percent. I mean, I'm even in a golf tournament at Waverly. Have, has anybody been to Waverly golf course inside the comment box? Um, I'm playing on the 15th and 16th. Um, it's a competitive golf tournament. As you know, I love golf. So um, that's how we're going to handle spring break. But of course, as news happens, you know, we got you covered right here. At Bama football on YouTube. We continue with the photos um, that we're looking. Did we update the rogue shop banner? T we're doing that right now. All right. It's updated. All right. And, um, this is a picture of Justice Haynes. So when you talk about those running back rooms and how are these running backs going to be implemented, haven't seen a photo of Jam Miller. Don't read anything into that. It's just like we just haven't seen him. Um, 
as of like one photo, <laughs> we'll see him to, not tomorrow. Uh, but Justice Haynes and, and what they're wearing up top. A lot of people ask, what are, what the hell's on their heads? Well, it's to prevent um, head injuries. So it's kind of like a buffer, um, you know, to prevent. They, I mean, they wear these pretty much all season long. All right, we continue looking at the photos. Um, there's a, this is a, the first uh, photo that has been released of uh, Chris Kapilovic. And he is the offensive line coach here at the University of Alabama from Baylor. And thank you, Shane. Shell, appreciate you. Um, and when you talk about an area that we're all looking at is the offensive line, clearly. Now, tomorrow, a lot of you have said that you want us to focus on the secondary. We're going to have, I mean, we should have cameras, enough cameras, you know, for the footage. But um, offensive line, who's working with the first team, right? At the tackles, what are we seeing? You know, where's Jaden Roberts and Tyler Booker? Um, but Coach Kabilovic, and I want to see kind of the energy that he has as well. The one coach, and I didn't, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't really get a, a lot of chance to see Eric Wolford coaching. It was closed during that time. But Kyle Flood, a couple years ago, 2019, had a chance to see him. And man, he was he was super intense. And before that was Brent Key, I believe. Um, but I want to see kind of that intensity that they bring with the offensive linemen and a lot of repetitions. That was the thing with Kyle Flood. All the offensive linemen were rolling. It was good to see. Love it. All right, we continue with uh, more photos um, right here that were released from uh, the University of Alabama. So Keanu Coop. Um, number 19, uh, a prospect that you're definitely going to get to see from the outside linebackers perspective um, this year. What, they're cut edge rushers in this 4-2-5, whatever the case is. I don't think we should be sleeping on him at all. Um, he's a guy that is primed for a really big season, so let's not forget number 19 right here. Um, I mean, he he's he could be like a super standout this year. All SEC, like he's that good. So let's please not forget about him when we talk on the defensive side. Um, Here's a picture of Jalen Milrow. He does, Chris, he does look bigger, honestly. I, I, I agree 100% with you. Uh, Jalen Milrow right here. Um, Coach Kalen uh, DeBoer was asked about Jalen Milrow. Um, T, is there any way that we could pull up that clip um, with Coach Kalen DeBoer talking about Milrow yesterday? And if you could add it, I would appreciate that. But here is uh, Jalen Milrow. I don't think that we had any other photos come in of um, – the quarterbacks doesn't mean anything. Like I said, I think there was one photo um, and I shared it on Slack team. I mean, you sat next to Jalen. Oh yeah, this is it. Perfect. Um, I, I put it on Slack. I can't find it right now. I might send it to us again. It was like a wide shot. Yeah. Can you put that up next? Thank you very much. All right. Here's a uh, coach. Kalen Abor talking about Jalen Milrow. Thank you T for adding this. Uh, we'll play this right now. Players. I mean, you sat next to Jalen Milrow at the basketball game. Is that your guy going into it, or do you clean slate every year with every position? Yeah, I mean, you want competition, right? And so um, the competition is always going to be there. And yeah, someone had to take the first reps today, you know, with uh, with uh, the ones uh, when we lined up and we referred to him as that, and Jalen did, you know. So um, you know, he's putting everything into it. That was a quick uh, soundbite. Um, but anyways, you get my point. He said somebody has to take uh, the first team reps, and it was him, and rightfully so. I mean, you look at Jalen Miro um, as a quarterback for the University of Alabama, finished number six in the Heisman Trophy, um, you know, candidate Yes, uh, last year and, and this year. You know, we've seen him everywhere with Coach Kalen Moore. How many photos have we seen of Jalen Miro with Coach Kalen Moore? Everywhere. We've seen them everywhere together, um, even at the basketball game. By the way, the basketball team plays tonight at the Swamp. That's going to be a challenging game um, tonight against Florida. Um, I mean, the game was hard uh, for Alabama and Florida last time when it was here at Coleman Coliseum. Florida's a good team. See if Alabama basketball can uh, bounce back. But today we're talking football right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Um, and I appreciate you guys being here. T's going to load up a photo that I wanted her to show as well. It was a wide shot, which was interesting because they don't do wide shots. Like, so what we're going to see tomorrow, uh, I sent it to you uh, via text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, we have to uh, bring it. Because um, we don't see wide shots. They're like, okay, this is a wide shot, okay? There's a huge difference from this picture. Oh, I'm sorry. T has a as a overlay. But there's a, there's a difference. There's just close-ups at practice, okay? This was taken by Courtney Morgan, who's a GM. 
Um, and sometimes they, they don't like this because they say it's a competitive disadvantage, like going forward. Yes, it is the first practice. It doesn't mean anything, you know? Um, but I thought that somebody, I think it was, um, Justin who covers a uh, TDA, he scooped this and then he put it on social media. But if we kind of look to, to this, you see, um, just kind of a snapshot of where guys are the, the, the fam, I really need help with this one. So, um, and I'm talking about to, to Ty Simpson's left. Number 69. Who is number 69? So that is to Ty Simpson's left. And as you can see, you have Ty Simpson at quarterback. You have Justice Haynes at running back. Um, I can't see who the center is. It looks like that could be Parker Brailsford, number 72. And then it looks on the far right. Is that Wilkham Formby, number uh 75 is that Nyquil Bentrade number 69? And to be who did it say on the roster? It doesn't have a 16 it, and it has Joseph Ionida, yeah, yeah, Ionida. That's I know, it but yeah. I, but that's I, not him, that's yeah. not him, right? I don't think that's see, Jor is saying that that 69 is a uh, Nyquil Bentrade, so it could be two 69s, maybe they like, I don't, I don't yeah. know. And as you can, so check this out, okay, stay with me, okay. So on the far left, you can see Coach Kalen DeBoer. And you can see Jamar. It looks like that's Jamarcus Shepard. And then in, in the back, in the far back, Formby. Yeah, welcome Formby on the right tackle. And um, on the far back, uh, you can see Sheridan is talking to Jalen Milrow. Do you see this? Are we seeing this? I don't see. Oh, Milrow. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. in the far mm -hmm. back. The far right? right. Yeah. But see, this is the. Oh, so maybe it's a 65. Nyquil Bentrade. Maybe it's not a 69. The left tackle. Okay. So stay with me. So Ty Simpson, pretend we're all Ty Simpson right now, looking at the defense. To his left. Oh. Yes. I think that is 65. Yeah. That could be a five. Yes. Hell good. Thank you, fam. Yeah. That's a five. Yeah. That's a five. So that would mean that is Nyquil Bentrade, right? Okay. Yeah. And then on the other side, that is uh, Wilcom Form doing some detective work here. Okay. Yeah. Definitely 65. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, fam. I, for whatever reason, it, it, doesn't it look like a 69? It, yeah, that's, I mean. And then when I saw Joseph Ionida, I was like, damn it. I was like, what? Well, clearly not. Yeah, yeah clearly not. So, okay, 65. Really good uh, work. Is there anything else that stands out? It looks like on, on the defensive side, there, this would be like a second team defense. So, um, it is 49 Quay Russo. I, mm -hmm. I need the updated roster, fam. Um, and 49 then you, is Connor Warhurst. Are you sure? It's the updated one that I just pulled, like downloaded. And then uh, 35 is Jeremiah. And Quay Russo is also 49. No, yeah, sorry. so that's who mm -hmm. it is. So Quay Russo on the outside. And then 35 should be Jeremiah Alexander. 35 yep. is, yep. And then 28, and Siri, yeah, Siri, 28 Siri. should be Justice Jefferson. 28 is Justice Jefferson. Perfect. Okay. So um, those, so let's just say that mm -hmm. the, the, which we already know, the linebackers are uh, Jaha Campbell and Deontay Lawson, and then behind them, Jeremiah Alexander and Justice Jefferson. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, I'm just, this was a, this was a interesting photo to go, you know, kind of go through uh, in detail. Does it mean anything? No. It means they're practicing. <laughs> just like <laughs> they're, they're practicing and it's a wide shot. We don't get wide shots, but when we do, we like to kind of uh, zoom in, right? Jay is like it's definitely twos on twos. Yeah, doesn't mean a lot at all. It's just practice. That's it. I what I what I do like is I do like uh, from what's kind of even more interesting than um, what like the actual players are on the field is how the coaches are, right? You see Coach Kalen DeBoer. If I'm looking at the photo, like to the left, uh, looks like Jamarcus Shepard, and then you see Nick Sheridan working with Jalen Milrow. DeBoer is the one looking at the um, clipboard. Yeah, yeah he yeah. has a clipboard on his left, yeah. right? So I, I like that kind of, it just kind of tells you, um, you know, I like that. Like, that's how the offense is going to work. So if you were like freaking out about Ryan Grubb, well, look, you have three coaches yeah. who are certainly just right there. So anyways, all right. Thank you, T. Appreciate it. Um, all right. We continue with the photos and um, Malachi Moore right here, number 13. Love uh, Malachi. Guy played in 700 in like 40 snaps last year. 
coming back for his extra year, even has his younger brother as a preferred walk-on. Um, so Malachi Moore, an in-state guy, an in-state baller. And on the footage that Alabama released yesterday, um, you know, he's making, you know, a play at practice. Not again, not a big deal. I'm just, this is what we have. And it, it's good to see. I mean, the um, Malachi Moore is just, uh, you know, he's such a great vet to have on this team. And um, good to see him. Good to see him out there. I think he provides a lot of much needed leadership for this entire secondary group, right? Um, two good shots of uh, Malachi Moore. Oh, this is a this is an interesting photo as well. So check this out. What's up, William? I see you inside the the comment box as well. Um, and train wreck, I see you, man. Uh, Kyle, the golf course. Uh, bring your sand wedge and putting. Eesh. Yeah, I feel good about the wedge, but you just never know with putting. You know, I don't know how the greens are going to roll. Um, yeah, we need to figure out. I told Demetrius T for the sponsor. Um, I'll text you. He just wants basically like his name as a sponsor. So, um, good morning, Kimberly. That's all good. We appreciate you being here. And we appreciate you guys being a fan funder inside um, the undefeated, the chat. So if your name is in green, that means you're supporting the channel. Um uh christian what's up man i see you there is no practice today but there is another practice uh, tomorrow which will be an open practice good morning Kristen. we see you as well good morning i really appreciate you being here uh so hit the hyperlink as, as low as two dollars and 99 cents to support the product right here on bama football on youtube remember free to watch not free to produce clearly and uh, appreciate you guys being here our sponsors uh on the screen residents in ocean city maryland lpr 20 percent off for bama fans in that area and then rogue shop uh, promo code is Bama Legal CBD. Um, this morning, you know, you, you, I, the, my workout was wild here in downtown Tuscaloosa. It's always free. It's F3. And uh, we crushed it. And um, you can see if you follow me on Instagram, <laughs> I'll put my uh, handle inside. You can see uh, uh, some of our workouts. Uh, but it's also F3 on Tuscaloosa. So anyways, I do like the topical oils and stuff like that. But um, you can check it out at rogueshop.com. This photo right here is of Dre Kirkpatrick. You want to feel a little bit old? <laughs> so Dre Kirkpatrick Jr., you probably remember him playing here at Alabama under Saban. Went in the first round, okay? This is his son. His son is now at Alabama, and he looks damn good, actually. Uh, and he's also, so he's playing with his pops' number. T. That, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Makes I love that. A yeah. little bit old, though. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does indeed. Uh, so this is Drake Patrick Jr. Um, and uh, he comes in, and damn, he looks he looks hungry, ready ready for business. <laughs> and he's more of a uh, he's more of a thumper. Like I think his pops was like a playmaker, um, but I think he's more of like a guy that can deliver the wood. I kind of I, I want to see his playing style. I don't know if he's going to be kind of similar to like. Um, I don't know how much speed he has. I, I don't know that. But I know that he can. He brings the wood. And what I mean by that is he's a hard hitter. Kind of like, remember DeMarco Hellams a couple years ago? DeMarco Hellams, actually, like pound for pound, he was the hardest hitter on the team. Um, so I don't know if he's going to feel like that. <laughs> William's like, I do feel old. But this one makes you feel a little bit older, too, because you're like, damn, like, really? Like, Jake Patrick's son's out there? <laughs> Uh, number 42, love this shot. Again, these are from the University of Alabama. Um, this is Yonze Pierre. <sighs> Another one of those guys. Oh, so when Smook and I, yesterday we met and we had a team meeting um, at Hotel Capstone. And we we're uh, getting out. We didn't eat. We we're just kind of in the lobby area. And we were walking out. We saw Quindarius Robinson uh, roll out on one of those scooters. And he's a huge dude. Like Yonze is huge too. But he's on one of these little scooters, like sitting down, not a standing up one, like a, a seated scooter, you know, and he's just rolling out. I'm like, yo, what's up? He's going to practice. Um, you're not really like in the media world. If you see a player like out kind of around, um, you know, you can say what's up to them or whatever, but they don't really encourage like talking to them, you know, like they could be going to class. Um, they like to keep those media opportunities like for the media. So um, we saw him, said what's up, and he was kind of on a, on his way. But he's he's huge. Um, Beyonce right here is now redshirt freshman at the University of Alabama, as you can see, number forty two. You know what I didn't see yesterday, which and it pissed people off last year was the green mouthpieces. Remember this? People yeah. were like really mad about him. The one thing that I noticed last year though 
is that a lot of players didn't wear mouthpieces. No, they they didn't. They they were really bad about that, actually. Do you know why you wear a mouthpiece? Yeah, so you don't get your teeth knocked out. Concussion. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, you know, in in a high impact sport like football, you know, it, that's what they're designed for. But I saw a lot of like I used to wear one that was removable, and then you kind of like put it up in your clip, up in your helmet. But these ones are, you know, they they stay on, but you got to wear it. Did you notice that last year, fam? Undefeated. What's up, Wade? See you inside the comment box as well. Um. Yeah, can't wait to. I, I think Yon's a splash this year, right? Um, ooh, I like this photo as well. Um, okay, see, if you if you just look at this photo, what's the, what does this number look like, T? Right away. Um, eighty four. Thank you. It's not. It's thirty four. It's Quindarius Robinson, and and how you do that is you look. Obviously, red is defense, uh -huh. right? At practice, and you see number zero right here, which leads you to Deontay Lawson, right? And then you're like, you know, number 34 is Q-Rob. So Deontay Lawson's a big man. And here you can see who we saw yesterday. Uh, this is Quindarius Robinson. Mm -hmm. So here he is at practice. Um, and again, it's a, it's a shell to prevent concussions. That's what they're wearing up top. Very common now. What's up, Javion? I see you inside the comment box. Appreciate you being here. Kareem Hood, what's up, man? Appreciate you. Sour apple, green mouth. But yeah, people didn't like those. I haven't seen those at all yet so far like i don't see one mouthpiece in this photo um all right we continue with the photos here's a photo of uh kane womack um this is our fo first photo of uh womack i think behind him just because i could tell like his his uh you know body makeup i think that might be freddie roach in the far back uh but this is womack the defensive coordinator this year these are, I mean, th these photos were put out by the University of Alabama. I just wanted to kind of walk you through. And again, we'll have practice uh, footage on Wednesday. Tons of footage. <clears throat> um, Steve, what's up, man? Appreciate you. Uh, Bama fans, let's get these gray names some color. Hit the join link and become a fan funder. Support Kyle and the coaches. Don't forget to run up the likes to help the channel. 100%. Honestly, we really appreciate you guys. And the more fan funders we get, um, you know, that, that helps us build the business. So um, we wouldn't be here without you guys. And we really appreciate you. So thank you very much for supporting us. Um, number 25 uh, right here is Richard Young, who's a running back at the University of Alabama. To the right of him is Justice Haynes. Um, very capable running backs. Don't see Jam Miller. Don't read too much into it. Uh, like I, I, we'll see him tomorrow. Thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate it. Um, but Richard Young is a guy who we can't wait to see eat. Yep. But these are the running backs. Mm -hmm. Richard Young, number 25. And number 22, that is Justice Haynes. We continue. Oh, so now we get into uh, the footage. So kind of slow down the footage um, a little bit. And this is of Danny Lewis, right? He's your tight end. Six foot. Oh, I like that. Very good, T. Nice work. Uh, this is Danny Lewis, your tight end. But I wanted to stop this, and I brought this out to Ty, because Ty was like, did anything stand out from the footage? So as I'm scrubbing, what scrubbing means is you kind of just like go through the footage, okay? So what you're going to see in this, <laughs> and I don't know, I somebody pointed this out, um, and I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm replaying it. Because I, I found it hilarious. So do you see number 17? It's a floating helmet. Are, is anyone seeing this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who is number 17 last year? Bond. Yeah. Isaiah Bond. So do you see how he, they're like stiff arming this helmet? <laughs> so, so what it is, is it's basically like a practice drill. You get the ball to the receiver. They turn it upfield. And they basically like stiff arm, right? You see, look look at how he's um, he's holding the football, right? When you hold a football, right? Everybody knows how to hold a football. You don't hold it like a loaf of bread. You put your, you know, your fingers over it. This is textbook. And then you have outside, you're swatting away a defender. So it, that it's number 17, <laughs> which is Bond. Yeah, I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't see. Thank you. I don't <laughs> think so either. There's no coincidences at Alabama. Like this is all by design. Right. <laughs> so uh, I saw that and I was uh, I was laughing because I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> So scrubbing through uh, the, the footage. Um, see, remember, okay, you can't tell who threw this football. 
Do you remember what happened last year? When Jalen – okay, no, first of all, there was a pass that was thrown. Fam, you remember this? It was around this time of year and – or in August. And there was this beautiful ball thrown, and the receiver makes catch. It was Ja'Cory Brooks. And uh, it was during this whole, like, cake off, right, this cold cake battle. And um, Jalen Milrow went on Alabama's Twitter and was like – Yo, tag, please. Like, he was the one that threw the ball. Seriously, he, like, called him out. He, like, he called out, like, the, the main channel that has, like, a million followers. Yeah. Because <laughs> everybody it was like, who threw this pass, blah, blah. So I don't know who threw this pass right now, but I do know who caught it. Um, and you can barely see number 19, which is Kendrick Law. So Kendrick Law out here. Yeah, missed the, the mystery, <laughs> the mystery deep ball. <laughs> Uh, no way. Facebook and Instagram are down. No way. Um, I don't. Oh, yep, <laughs> they are. Really? Yep. <laughs> what are people gonna do? Uh, Twitter, YouTube. Yep. <laughs> huh. It's weird. Yep. Facebook. It's so funny when the, you know one goes down because they're run by the same. And they both do. So then this particular uh, clip right here, you have Malachi Moore and you have, I don't know who number 80 is, um, but Malachi Moore making a play. He actually is able to keep focus and like one hand this ball. It, what does it mean? Again, it's practice. There's, you know, it doesn't mean that, um, you know, anything's going, you know, crazy. Uh, Josh just, Clavis. Hey, what's up? Uh, is the is 80. Oh, the. Uh, yeah, the new guy. The new guy. No way. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Josh Cuevas uh, right here getting welcome to SAC football <laughs> uh, by uh, by Malachi Moore. Mm -hmm. Malachi Moore is is gently welcoming him yeah, to so the sweet. SEC, and uh, that looks like a very nice uh, welcome <laughs> by uh, scooping the ball. And we have a new uh, fan funder uh, inside. Uh, Jawan, what's up? And um, let's uh, kind of. Uh, Shout out a couple of these uh, fan funders. We'll do, uh, let's just start out from the top team to everybody mm -hmm. who has contributed today. And we'll get a super chat leaderboard as well. Yeah, before it bounce yeah out. for sure. All right. So James, what's up, man? Thanks for coming to a, a fan funder right here on Batman Football on YouTube. Patriot Life, always doing an amazing job. Uh, giving out fan funderships, like giving you a taste to become a fan funder. Uh, access to different emojis inside the comment box. And if you just became a, a fan funder, use the horns down emoji. That's the favorite one uh, that people like to use. Um, how about uh, Jawan with the 20 spot? Thank you so much earlier today for Ty. Um, Jawan again um, with another 10 spot. Looks like he's going to be in first place in the Super Chat leaderboard. I've been watching you from the beginning. He's talking about Ty, who did a really great job. Fred sent in a super sticker, two super stickers actually, and uh, Jawan uh, and with another five spot saying, And becoming yeah, a member. 100%. Damn. We, we, uh, Jawan taking care of us. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate you, Jawan. Yeah, so these uh, were a couple items that were, uh, you know, brought in yesterday. And, of course, it's footage that was posted by the University of Alabama. So um, you guys can definitely go go uh, follow their coverage, um, you know, on their social media accounts, which are actually down today. But you have Twitter. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sending people there and it's the, they're not even there. Um, yeah, so how uh, these next couple days of work is uh, pretty much business as usual. And then uh, Wednesday, I mean, we're gearing up. I mean, we have huge plan in place. We have cameras. We have microphones. We have all sorts of stuff to deliver the best product. What were you guys thinking yesterday um, during the streaming coverage? Because when we uh, we are told to be there um, no later than 5.30. So show up. Smook and I showed up at 4.30. So he was running like headquarters from studio. And uh, so and then it, it, they told us to be here by like 5.45. But he didn't get in till like 6.10. Or something like that. So I appreciate you guys being patient. Janet, thank you so much for, for waiting. And I, I was telling Smook, um, just keep people on, you know, keep telling people that we're coming because I'm with the camera. And then somebody was like, how hard is it to keep the camera in place? Because I was showing the room. Nobody gets to see the room ever. So I was showing like how many people were there. <laughs> Someone is like, how hard is it to keep the, the camera in place? I was like, there's no one here yet. I just wanted to show the room. Um, what time is practice footage tomorrow? Um, yeah, we need some uniforms for sure. 
uh, practice tomorrow. Uh, they told us to be there um, at 2.45, and then we will go out at 3.25, and we'll get to see, like, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes of practice. Then we'll go back to our, like, media area. We'll upload that footage, and then they will bring us back out for practice interviews. So you'll get a ton of coverage tomorrow. We should have two cameras, um, two like video cameras there tomorrow, as well as like photos. So we'll have a ton of stuff. And there are three opportunities like this this season. Um, but the SID also told us, who's Josh Maxson, told us yesterday that if it becomes like a competitive disadvantage for Alabama football, if we're, you know, po- I don't know. I mean, how could it not be? I mean, um, that they'll tailor back. So I think they'll just basically kind of give us a taste of, um, you know, what's going on at practice. And then overall it'll be kind of, you know, closed up, not so much to what it was under coach Saban. I see, I, I think we will get our opportunities, but I think during spring ball we'll have opportunities. And I think during August, probably some opportunities and then they'll probably tighten up, which I get right. I mean, you, you want to be able to maybe provide one opportunity during the season um, like maybe during the week, but I get it, right? T, like in, in terms of like closing stuff up. I mean, yeah, I just don't see this lasting all season. Like, no, this. no, no, no. I I think it'll be, it'll be like this now, and maybe in August. But I think like come the first week, I mean, they might be back to like sending us footage. So I I don't know. Um, are we going to live stream it? No, they they actually don't allow you to live stream when we're out there because of um. So th- this is this is where it get, gets kind of interesting, okay? Like, let's say we're out there, and this is this is kind of the tricky task for like when they allow us to be there. Let's say we're live streaming the practice, and a player gets hurt, right? And everybody is like streaming that player got hurt, that that player is injured. Number one, we don't know like what that injury is, and maybe his family is watching him get hurt. You see what I'm saying? So usually how it works is they'll ask us um, not to report on an injury um, or even show it unless like the coach has addressed the family and we know like what the injury is. So that's kind of like an unwritten rule um, that that exists. And you guys can un- understand that, right? It's like you wouldn't want to see, I mean, and for the player, and there's also like privacy laws too. Like you can't talk about like injuries. That's why like when coach Saban talks about injuries, you know, in the past, he'd be like, it's a foot, it's a hip. It's like not the exact injury per like, you know, privacy laws. T we can get that super chat uh, leaderboard up. Yeah. Cause I mean, and people have general questions. So don't feel like if you have a question out there, um, that it's a bad question at all. Like you guys deserve like to understand like how it works. And uh, Juwan crushing it this morning with 35 already Patriot life in with 24 at 95 um, and Fred with an eight spot. And then Patriot life uh, there at the bottom with five uh, fan funder uh, memberships that he's gifted. So appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much um, uh, for, for you guys being super chat uh, members this morning, right here on Bama football on YouTube. Yeah, but that's how it works. And if you have any other questions, about how it works or like you know the operational standpoint i'll let you know but it's um it it, i get it and so what we do is we basically go back and we upload the footage and if there's anything like and i don't think it'll be like this um you know they don't like micromanage us or tell us that we can't like upload stuff we can upload whatever we want but it's kind of like an unwritten rule like you don't do that like ethically you wouldn't like upload an injury. Like I get it. Like on, you know, we're watching TV and stuff like that. Sometimes it's just like a guy breaks his leg or something like that. It's just like, you don't want his family to be able to, you know, to to have to rewatch that. So, um, but everything else is pretty much open. I mean, we can film, there'll be like three different stations. So Alabama has four practice fields and it's a huge area. So usually they work on two fields and, um, there'll be offense, defense, um, and uh, basically, you'll be able to kind of like float around the areas with like Alabama staff and they'll um, be like, OK, you guys can shoot here and they'll have if you've ever watched a practice, they have it basically by periods. So you'll get like two periods, which will be like, you know, I don't know, eight minutes each. So if they give us two periods, that would be like 16 minutes. If they give us three, that'd be 24. Upload that footage. And what I'm going to do is I'll uh, upload it raw, just raw. And then we'll come back and kind of break it down. 
and then organize it going forward. But the best way to do it is just raw footage, right? You want to hear like sights and sounds. And we'll bring that to you for 100% right here on Bama Football on YouTube. And I, I just thumbs up. I mean, the, the channel um, wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you. But also like there's strategy that is put into this. And there's content creators, um, you know, here that I feel are talented enough to be here on this channel. And we're here. We're at spring football. And, um, you know, everyone's dialed in. We got game plans. And, um, you know, I showed you my notes. I have notes everywhere about kind of the strategy of, you know, how we attack each and every day. Now, So I write these out. And then I come and um, so look, this is <laughs> check this out. <laughs> this is hilarious. So this is yesterday. This is actually a drawing that I did for T about how we film the the footage. T, do you remember this? Like, so these are the practice fields, right? And basically, like we're we're here at the media, right? And we we're going to run up here and film, and then we're going to run back and upload. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's how it works. It's, it's, I mean, I'm and I'm super visual. Does it help out, T? Yeah, like, yeah, it does. For and, sure. Yeah, and Smokey came when he had his notebook, yeah. and he was like writing his stuff. Um, I think T, you were just able to kind of like absorb it. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Sometimes I like the the, the, the like the seeing boards, it visually for helps. sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. It depends on what it is. Yeah. So we'll have Smook uh, coming up next here at uh, 10 p.m. And um, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, my segment. Kyle going to stream the end of time stress for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be here. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> the apocalypse. How, yeah. How it uh, ended. Stick to the jump roping. Let two do the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are just uh, those are quick uh, notes. So, um, yeah, but I'm excited. And we'll have uh, Smook popping in here at 10 a.m. and, uh, you know, feeling good about where things stand with everything regarding, like, the coaching staff and, um, you know, where the players are. It's just one practice. Tomorrow will be two practices, and then it will be three at the end of the week, and then we'll get to dive into it. But um, I do have to say that I think that uh, these guys are off to a really good start and probably a better start than people – would understand. And I say that because I think there's a lot of talk around the, the nation that these coaches are in over their head or they don't understand where they're at. I don't really buy any of that. I think if anything, it was a really good changing of the guard. Like Ty was asking me this morning, he was like, was it like shocking to see coach Kalen DeBoer take over? Not really. I, I think that, you know, they've actually handled it pretty well. It was like a pretty smooth transition. Um, I like Coach Kalen DeBoer's interview. What, what do you think, T, about Kalen DeBoer's interviews? Pretty kind. It's kind of refreshing, yeah, right? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. And and you know what? Um, what I do like about Coach Kalen DeBoer. So sometimes on um, Coach Saban's Monday press conference, because you guys are always about sound, right? Um, Stephen, it, it doesn't look like I'll take any calls today. I look like I just cruised through my segment. Um, but we're we're waiting on Smook. Um. But I, I don't know, like sometimes because because sound is really important, right? <clears throat> so Coach Saban would would sometimes speak on Mondays. He'd be like, "Welcome everybody." I was like, "Low oh, energy Mondays." Oh, Ole Miss is going to be very challenging, and people would be like, "What did he say?" So with some of these younger guys, like Kalen DeBoer, Kane Womack, these younger guys, you don't have to worry about <clears throat> the sound as much because the audio levels are fine. That's something that I the biggest thing for me is the actual footage doesn't need to be that good. Like we try, obviously we're going to try to always give you the best footage, but the, the audio, like it, it T does it make people mad? Oh my God. That is the biggest part is the audio. Mm -hmm. That's why like even this microphone, like some people, I don't, I don't like this microphone. Like I don't, I don't like the way it looks. I, I, I look like I'm like in a, a helicopter or something like that. But I know that the sound quality is very good. So that's why I, that's why I roll with it. Do um, you want to check on uh, Smook and see where he's at? Maybe. I don't know. Someone said that some internets are, are freaking out as well. I don't know. All right. Um, if you guys want to call in, um, call line is open. So if you have like a question, I think we missed a super chat from Adam. 
Adam, what's up, man? Um, hi, Kyle. The D-line really has to step up this season, get more pressure if we're going to do well in the 4-2-5. Yeah. Um, again, we haven't seen any of the practice, but I think you make a really good point. I think when you look to the defensive line, um, we know what we have in Tim Keenan, but what are we going to get in Jaheim Otis this season? Because last year, I don't think he played to his potential. Um I thought, and I and I get it. I think he was a little bit banged up or whatever. But you have other players like James Smith, Jameer and Lathan, Damon Payne, um, whoever it is, is um, going to step up and you know kind of rise to that occasion. So, um, I I think that the defensive line um, is in a good position from a roster standpoint. And I think uh, most importantly, you have Coach Freddie Roach who was retained under that ecosystem. I think he does a really good job. I've always been a, a really um, you know high on Freddie Roach to be honest. I don't think that, um, you know, he's really gotten the credit that he deserves. A lot of people were kind of attacking him in years past about his, um, I don't know, like recruiting abilities. But as you saw just recently, Alabama was able to flip Antonio Coleman. And this is the other thing that I was talking about um, with Coach Kalen DeBoer, I think, yesterday. Was um, the fact that Coach Kalen DeBoer has some really solid victories this season, right? I think... um, we kind of look at it to where um, he won uh, head-to-head against Auburn with Ryan Williams, and then he's able to flip a prospect who you know was once committed to Alabama, then to Auburn, now back to Alabama, um, and Antonio Coleman. And I think that says a lot about Coach Kalen DeBoer and kind of some early season victories, early year victories that he's already had. And that makes people happy. Like, if you want to make a fan base happy, I'll say this again and again and again. You, uh, you win recruiting. And um, you play good defense, actually. That's how you really make people happy. I don't know what it is. Like, you can have the most high, the, like, the best offense. But if you don't play good defense, it makes people mad. At least people here, I don't know, you know, like, if, if that would ever change. But since I've been here, as long as you play good defense, people are happy. But if you play terrible defense, oof. Or like even average, like above average defense, sometimes people gets people mad. Um, So call line is open and uh, we'll take a call right now. And it's, uh, I think we got uh, Chris from New Jersey. Chris, what's up, man? Appreciate you being here. Kyle, how are you doing, my brother? Doing great, man. Appreciate Um, you joining me this morning. Welcome to the show. couple, couple Couple quick ones. Next, I hope, tomorrow, I, w- I want you and Smook to wear the same uni, man. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that, man. Come on. We got our own unis on our side. And, what, oh, Kyle, I gotta, I'm, I'm embarrassed about this. But I'm going to tell you because I tell you everything anyway. I am watching the, uh, the press conference, and I am such a fool. I'm like, oh, I hope they pick Kyle for a question. I hope they pick Kyle for a question. Mm. I am like the Forrest Gump of New Jersey. I'm like, <laughs> like hoping to. <laughs> That's what I literally was saying. I hope they pick Kyle for a question. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I am one silly man. Yeah. You know, the way that the questions work is so, um, and thanks again, Adam, for the super chat. We got on Coach Smook down. We'll go to Coach Smook in just a second. Um, but yeah, so the way that the press conference works is like we're all in this media room, which I was showing yesterday. And then the SID comes in and kind of gives you like, he's like, hey, like, you know, raise your, coach is going to make an opening statement and then raise your hand. So we raise our hand. Um, I clearly, I raised my hand and made eye contact uh, with the SID. And he's like, got you. Um, And he's like, I'll try. But as you could see, I I don't know how many questions there were. Didn't get an opportunity yesterday. Um, So maybe at another point in time, it's not a big deal. It's just, you know, it's how it works. I mean, there's, I don't know, 40 people in there. So, Um, and sometimes um, Jarvis, uh, Josh and Josh Max and I have played golf together. They actually didn't want to give me credentials last year because I was with YouTube. And um, I don't know. It seems like they've been, you know, going kind of the YouTube direction recently. So I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Um, and I actually asked them for an interview with Kate, Coach Kalen DeBoer, and they said not at this time. Uh, right, T? Yeah, I asked you. And then, yeah, for the oh, it's gonna assistant happen. coaches it's too. It's going to happen, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah cause I, so I don't know. Uh, but anyways, I mean, we kind of like just focus on what we can do, and that's covering, you know, the Crimson Tide. I think like um, – you know, well, that's kind of, you know, our focus is just to to do what we can and uh, just report on the team. So whatever. Um, what, what else you got, Chris? Uh, right. But right, before, I, uh, before I before I bring on please, Smook. Please. 
Yeah, please tell Smook what I said about the unis. Out, outstanding job, you guys. It's a dream team. And uh, roll tide. Have a, uh, a great day. All right. Appreciate you, man. All right. Thanks for calling in, uh, Chris. All right. That's Chris from New Jersey. Appreciate you joining us. And now uh, we want uh, Coach Smook, uh, who just popped away. He'll be uh, right. Uh, no, he's back. All right. Uh, three, two, one. Uh, Coach, give me a second to, to fix the audio. Smook. What's up, man? Can you hear me? What's yeah, up, I can man? Be good. Appreciate you. Yeah. Man, um, every yeah, time. So uh, it's weird because every time I get ready to come on for my segment at that time, that's when room, <laughs> the room, uh, the housekeeping come by to see if I need anything. So I'll be having need that one minute. It's like as soon as I'm ready to come on, it's like. I see her walking by the door and then I can hear her knocking. I'm like, oh. yeah. So I, I have a, I have some photos um, here that you can kind of just like, you know, scrub through. I was talking about them as well. Um, but you were there, I mean, yesterday and um, you know, we we're kind of, you know, talking about coach Kalen DeBoer, things we learned, things we observed. Um, I mean, did you have a chance to kind of make like one or two like takeaways from uh, yesterday? I mean, whether it's, you know, the small footage that we saw or a photo that stands out or a quote that coach Kalen DeBoer says, um, I will say this, Kyle, the opening statement about uh, you can see the relief about getting day one out the way. That's one thing I was really uh, that stood out to me. It was yeah. like he was eager to get this thing started. Um, and uh, but like we were talking about yesterday, um, just his delivery with answering the questions, man, how direct to the point he is. I mean, you get all the information, the questions you answer, you're going to get. I mean, the questions you ask, you're going to get those answers. Um, he doesn't deviate from the subject. And uh, it's like a total different dynamic of what I was seeing with watching Coach Saban interviews. Mm -hmm. And now I see in Kalen. I mean, same type of uh, uh, delivery. I guess you could say uh, presence, uh, mm -hmm. not necessarily delivery, but the same type of presence, but the delivery. And then from the uh, pictures, man, just uh, I seen somebody make a funny comment, talk about our guys looking small. I was like, I don't know. Maybe my glasses are jacked up, but. I'm looking at even just Malachi Moore. He looked jacked. Well, no, no. Uh, how about yesterday when we were leaving Hotel Capstone? And, you robbed, uh, right? <laughs> and the crazy yeah. thing was is he was on like this little scooter. So this big old he, dude on his. <laughs> he he was huge. Like he was his yeah. So he wasn't small by any uh, means. It was funny. He said, uh, he said I don't know what he was from fourth quarter, man. He said yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what he was doing over by uh, Hotel Capstone, where wait, he had his hood on, and uh, he was just kind of cruising. I'm trying to get to the. I think I have a photo of him. Um, oh, there he is. And he, you know what's what's crazy, is he doesn't even look big right here. But he's huge, man. He's like, huge. He's like two sixty. Uh, T, bro. can we look up how big, how much uh, Quindarius Robinson weighs real fast? Yo, <laughs> I mean, at, at, like, it was funny. I think that's what made it funny to us, Kyle, because we were walking back across the street mm -hmm. and we were talking about the game plan for last night. And we see him, like, riding towards us, right? And we're like, <laughs> we just staring. And, you know, we can't, you're not, not going to be a fanboy, man. We're just staring. And he just, yeah, it was like, wow. When he riding yeah. off, you know, he's like, I said, this big old joke. <laughs> How much do we, T? 31. Uh, 231 yeah 231 that's a big oh, dude man. yeah so um anyways all right so uh fam please uh follow coach smook and uh support him like you guys would support me coach have a really good segment um of course you know we'll be you know our our shows um you know throughout this week is you know our our host and we will have Meryl back uh t at the end of yeah so it looks like the 18th because he's okay. making a move to florida yeah so he's moving He's moving from Washington to Florida. Yeah. Well, he's coming to SEC country. I know. He'll be closer. Yeah. He's so excited, too, man. Um, I'm excited because now that what we – we I know we're not going to reveal it right now, but what we were talking about, you know, that's that's right down his alley, Kyle, for mm -hmm. the summer. That, that's going to be – Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, 100%. he's that side. I'm going to be on this side. It's about to be like, whew. 
Yeah, he's, he's really good so. in the recruiting space too. So, anyways, you guys uh, enjoy yourselves with Coach Smook. Um, I'll be uh, I'll be around. I'll be in and out. But uh, you guys do your thing. And uh, we'll start off the show with Antonio Sell, Snell uh, supporting Coach Smook. Antonio, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for taking Coach. Take care, you, Coach, and uh, I'll catch you guys soon right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Oh, and be sure and look for more videos that we're posting. Um, so whether those are shorts, whether that's videos behind the scenes, uh, we appreciate you, fan funders. And Coach, uh, during your segment at one time. I'm definitely uh play the commercial and uh, you know thank all the sponsors there at the bottom of the screen right right appreciate right. you brother see you coach roll tie y'all we are here we are back man welcome 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 thank you all for hanging out supporting the big bro ty well the little bro i keep forgetting i'm older than ty y'all but thank y'all for supporting ty and the big bro kyle man uh this morning always bringing the energy doing what we do man trying to bring you the best coverage possible when it comes to our Alabama Crimson Tide football team. Um, and, and I mean, it's, it's just an awesome time to be a Bama fan. After yesterday's interview with Coach Kalen DeBoer, man, I'm just that more excited. But shout out to Antonio Snell starting to show off my segment off with the uh, the, the Coach Smook. Remember what I said, bro. Keep grinding. Appreciate that with the 1999 Super Chat. Y'all, I really do appreciate y'all. So uh, we're not going to waste no more time on that page. We are turning the page we are moving forward because there's a lot of work to be done there's a lot of coverage to be made right so let's get into it today y'all want to start this thing off with the right energy well y'all started off the right way let me go, man. Let me do my shout outs roll call let's go adam in the chat what's up adam my guy adam uh lax what's good fam appreciate you for pulling up janet how you feeling auntie how you feeling let's go baby Kareem, how you feeling? They said, Kareem, I seen you talking about the, the famous visor. Look, y'all, we got y'all see y'all see the segments. We got under the radar, on the radar. We got some film we're gonna watch. We got some highlights we're gonna react to today. So yeah, it's gonna be a, a good time today during our segment. Rocket Town, what's good, my brother? Wade's World, how you doing? Wade World, y'all, we got a celebrity in the house, and I'm not him. I'm gonna let y'all know Wade's World is a funny dude, man. Y'all gotta go check his content out on Instagram. I, I, hey, wait, you got a YouTube page or something, bro? I need to I need to have something else to watch. I got got to have another decompress, uh, a decompression activity for when I don't, you know, when I'm not covering the channel and I'm trying to take a break from seeing Alabama stuff, other people's takes and stuff, trying to keep my takes fresh. I need something else to watch. So I already watch uh, my guy. Uh, dang, I forget the name. Reacts. The family reacts. I forget their name. King Family. King Family Reacts. Uh, yeah, man. They they do some good content over there, too. Are we really Dallin Mirror or or are we critiquing him, guys? At this point, I think now, because of how everything is turning, I think we're critiquing him now. I think majority of the fan base is starting to critique instead of doubt. Now that we're turning the page. I think so. Yeah, man. Uh, Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Larry Large. What's good, family? Yeah, man, what's good? Hey, Larry, I ain't got no uh, no reality or reach in my inbox. We're gonna do do reality or reach tonight, so go ahead and hit us with a few. Send me a few of them, man. You do you? I might you might just need to be designated the reality reach. They did do a good one last night, though. That did do a good one in the chat last night. I got a screenshot of it. It was real good. Uh, we did a couple polls. It was fun, y'all. It was fun. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. James Drive in the uh, James in the chat. I said James Drive. Dope boy, what's good, family? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all feeling it? What's up, Jarvis? Dino, what's good? Dwight in the chat. All the family in here. Alexa, how you feeling? Clint, what's good? My hair looking nice, Clint. Clint, don't lie to me now. You know y'all be gassing me up. I don't look. I, I, y'all gotta tell me the truth, man. It's time to get a retwist. My wife was laughing. She was like, "You struggling, ain't you?" Nah, I'm trying to hold on, baby. I'm trying to hold on. What up, Brandon? How you feeling? Jawan Corey came in this day with a $10 super chat, man. Let's go. Said, what it do, Smoot? Man, I don't know. You tell me. What's the word? What's the word? Jawan Corey, appreciate that $10 super chat, man. Yes, sir. Dontario. That's my guy, man. I'm glad you made it off the road safe. You know, it was good to talking to you, talking with you and a few others last night, man. City Heights, how you feeling? Yes, sir. Adam, you feel me? You feel me? What's good, Adam? I think I shouted you out too. Megan, what's good? DR334. What's good? Chris from New Jersey. Yes, everybody's here. My family is here. Maddie P, what's good? He said, what's up, Coach Smook? A huge shout out to both you and Kyle for bringing us live coverage of Coach KD's press conference. Hey, that's what we're here for. That's what we're going to continue to do. 
Um, I mean, you got other outlets that do great coverage and things of that nature. We're just trying to find our lane and thrive in it. That's all we're doing, y'all. And I think we're on we're on the right path. Brian Russell, what's hey? You're absolutely right. We're gonna talk a little bit about that because Coach Kalen DeBoer, he's um he's very critical with his team too. So I I, I do want to get into it. the advisor suite, man. I just got it out the washer. Uh, I took I went and washed it because I had been wearing it a lot in the, in the past couple weeks. So I had to go get that thing clean, boy. Get that clean. KT, my sister is back. Look, she she like uh, her and Nicole. They have to take little social media breaks. They they get off of social media and they kind of detach for a while so they get straight. Appreciate y'all for tuning in, y'all. Hey, Simeon Washington, how you feeling today? Appreciate you for pulling up. I, I'm trying to make sure I don't miss any like people uh that i usually don't see chat in a lot in here i'm trying to learn to acknowledge and pay a little bit more better attention to the uh chat y'all zay what's good man from the 904 what's 904 that's uh it's 904 florida it's 904 florida i don't know i don't know smooth what up one that's my brother man what's up Warren? how you feeling man yeah yeah how you feeling Let's dive into it today, y'all. I appreciate y'all for hanging out. We're going to dive into it. We're going to get right into it. But before we get into it, y'all know what we got to do. We got to pay some bills, man. And this this professionally cut commercial Kyle has done, man. I'm telling y'all, I'm going to keep bragging about it. But let's give some love to our sponsors. We're going to start here, right here with the, uh, let me hide this comment first. And we're going to go here. Hey, take a quick second. Check out this commercial. Give a shout out to our sponsors. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code LPR for special BAMO football pricing up to 20% off. Also, go to the rogueshop.com. Use the promo code BAMO. You get legal CBD. For me personally, I like the topical oil. You know how intense my workouts are, right? So I like the topical oil. I like to rub that on my back, whatever, after those cinder blocks. So go to their website, cruise down, look through their website, and uh, definitely check out rogueshop.com. And like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is BAMA. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 cents a day. How do you do this? Make sure you're logged into your account. This is on a computer. You can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership. Once you click membership, you can see different options. You can see an upgrade button right there to the right. If you want to go through the different levels, we have fan funder videos from the staff right here at Bama football on YouTube. Very easy to navigate. Let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama football on YouTube. And of course, if you want to rock that undefeated gear, Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Yes, sir. Appreciate Kyle for that fire commercial, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but that dude, like, seeing that, man, just lets you know how much this channel is growing. I'm excited about it, honestly. I'm excited to be a part of this team and be along for the ride, y'all. Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Let's jump into it. Um, public service announcement. Uh, Alabama football new era has officially begun, right? And and it's on a it's on a level where a lot of people are starting to pay attention a lot more closer, right? And it's not just because of the hype around it. Now, now there's going to start being some footage. There's going to start being some actual reports coming from practice with guys' development. And um, I, I I've seen how in, intentional this staff. Uh, I would like to believe that how intentional they are based off of Coach KD's approach to that presser yesterday. And myself and Kyle, y'all were just talking about it. Um, some of the reactions, we basically covered everything. But uh, one of the uh, another highlight that I went back and I was able to listen to and uh, uh, kind of key on, it was the quote where he was saying, guys, were protecting each other. No injuries. Um, to me, and that was in his opening statement. To me, that is an important thing right now. You got guys who are really banking on this year to be the year to solidify themselves as the college athlete, you know, going to the next level uh, in the NFL. And you have a lot of veteran leadership on both sides of the ball mixed in with a lot of young talent that that is uh, projected to develop at a, at a high rate, right? Um, Kalen DeBoer and his staff are really about forward progression, meaning 
uh yesterday's success doesn't mean anything you know let's let's move forward and the the, the continual pursuit uh uh the relentless pursuit of exerting effort that's what that was one of the terms he used the resilient pursuit of exerting effort that's all he wants to see man and you can kind of see that based off you know a lot of the workout clips that these guys were posting before spring practice um one thing that is weird though and me and kyle kind of was laughing about this like uh they're going on spring break this week so it's going to be weird like i'm trying to figure out you know what what do i want to see is i'm trying to figure out if we're going to have a similar situation to last year during the off season where guys go off and put in that work not going off to relax not going to panama city or vegas or whatever because you know kids got money now so now they could travel for spring break you know back then panama city was the spot you know because you only was having that little that little stipend check and the little money that mom and daddy was giving you as an athlete so now they're getting that money they they try but i i would like to see them use that time to really work their crafts on their own individual times um the facilities are always available to these young men uh getting a view of the facilities yesterday was a, a, another thing for me um i can't wait to be back up there wednesday for practice uh we'll be practicing on at a different spot than what everybody's used to so uh it's, i think it's an older spot i i'm still getting acquainted y'all so as i continue to grow in this i'm gonna continue to pass on the information the inside scoops everything you need to be privy to we'll get it to you all right all right so um busy week who's here i have to pull up this graphic because we got a lot of players coming um one thing about last night i was able to confirm with uh two players they will be here tomorrow well one is here today one recruit is here today and that is the likes of let me go to my graphic because i did not put it on here here we go so today in town already we already have um 26 class of 26 four star top 100 qb out of utah Hellman kasuega uh he we were talking yesterday he is in town today he said he has some training and some meetings that he's going to get to and then tomorrow he'll be doing his tour of the campus he'll be able to view the practice um and we plan on having a conversation and being able to speak with him and uh getting him you know acquainted with the fan base uh he is definitely interested in alabama which is a good thing uh it's still early in his recruiting process but you know seeing 26 kids on campus already that lets you know that this staff is really already they have their plan set in place and they have a, a method that they're applying and it's good to see that um some more visits for this weekend that'll be coming up during throughout the weekend through this weekend um we got uh the youngin duke johnson a, a player that i'm featuring on the radar today uh uh i mean i don't i don't even really know what to say about the young man because once you look at his y'all see man i y'all know i don't hype people up daryl johnson out of eastman georgia uh I, I i don't hype kids up that that don't deserve it right um he's he's a he's a player man and the way it's looking man you don't know where to pay this young man free safety linebacker running back wide receiver tight end i mean where do you play him so uh can't wait to see him on campus this week this weekend for sure uh we got nation montgomery we got london merritt London Merritt is a guy I'm excited about. Four-star defensive lineman in the 25 class. Uh, was able to chop it up with him very briefly. I mean, these kids have schedules. And, you know, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to be an outlet. You get what I'm saying? And get y'all the inside scoop of what their feels is towards the University of Alabama and their, their possibilities of being the next uh, part of the next phase of, of this championship breed and culture that we're, we're continuing to upbuild. Juju Lewis, everybody's hyped about juju lewis coming this weekend uh top 10 qb out of 25 class five star uh braylon womack uh the number four corner in the 26 class uh another athlete guys i mean a lot of these kids man they they say corner they say wide receiver but they could play just about anywhere and that's i see a lot of athleticism in this class uh one of my personal favorites uh travis smith jr be here this weekend can't wait to touch bases with him catch up with him in person haven't seen him in about two years in person uh you know since i left to go to virginia um so it'll be good to see him on campus this weekend um who else man they sean brain the tight end 25 uh four-star tight end he'll be on campus this year uh and, and another guy that you all were hype about in the chat the other day uh i think coin guy was in here uh talking about uh bryce perry Wright, the four-star defensive lineman uh the one that we're trying to figure out how he doesn't have that fifth star 
that's what that's what we're trying to figure out we're trying to figure out how he doesn't have his fifth star with uh with a couple of other guys that's uh on this on this uh this talent this this target uh list for alabama recruiting so uh what happened we got family we got beef in the family y'all better stop arguing man y'all better stop arguing look i'm, I'm the big brother y'all better stop stop it right now <laughs> nah for real y'all chill out y'all chill out we got enough of that we got enough of that let let coach smooth be the uh be the blunt take the blunt of all the the bad energy and stuff i got i feel like god has graced me to be in that place for this season man so let let me take on all that bad energy stuff y'all keep that from outside of our family man we can have disagreements we can agree to disagree we can disagree to agree like me and uh what's call it was doing the other day it was so funny we're going back and reading those comments we were disagreeing with each other and agreeing with what we were saying with uh Jalen Miro storm motion and it, it was to me it's funny it, I don't when I get passionate about it it's, it's all about putting the content out there for y'all but I respect everybody's takes man D difference or agreeing I respect your takes don't ever take it personal I said this before I'm gonna keep saying it so let's move into today's hot segments man uh like I said y'all y'all gonna be like man Smoothie moving through a segments well we working on something we trying to keep this thing keep this thing tight so when i do get the chat talk right once we hit everything and we expound when i do get the chat talk we could talk we could talk talk you get what i'm saying so that's that's my favorite part of my segments talking to you all engaging with you all looking at what y'all are saying and uh and, and, and reacting a lot, yeah a lot of people have man but it, i think this spring is going to tell a lot about Miro. y'all y'all just keep 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 believing keep speaking what you're seeing keep sharing your opinions and we'll see what happens at the end of spring Kalen DeBoer is going to make the right decision. Um, I, I know he is. And, and at the end of the day, whether it's Miro, whether it's Simpson, whether it's uh, Lonergan, whether it's Mac, I, whoever it is, whoever he chooses, I'm going to stand behind him. I'm going to push him. And I'm going to continue to support him. Um, so here, under the radar. Psh, psh, psh. All right. Coach Smoot can be our debate moderator. You know what? That would be a cool little uh, show or segment to have, huh? Have like two fans get on and 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 like I control the debate and then I weigh in on it to see who won. That might be some some off season content. We out there, who out there coaching? Where's Coach Coin? All right, I don't know, man. I I, I wanted him to pull up, man. Y'all know what? It ain't that I don't like Coin God, man. He's like he, he's he's the perfect troll. He keeps my energy up. I I I, I love his energy when he come in. He stand on what he say. We go back and forth. I respect people like that. You know, I would never disagree with i mean uh disrespect anybody like that you know you can stand on what you say that's what you do man i like it i like it. but under the radar let's jump into it man a guy that came on the radar shout out to brody smoot over at 100.9 um if y'all don't follow him on twitter go check brody smoot out you want to get some good write-ups some good excerpts about uh recruits and what they have going on um as far as being considered uh, a target for alabama or being offered Brody Smoot is really the guy with the uh like he's going to be on top of that you know that's that's like an expertise of his and uh the network that they do so uh yeah we're, we're we kind of like resource off of each other because at the end of the day we want to provide everybody that's that's you know doing that we want to provide the best content available for Alabama football you get what I'm saying the best information so shout out to Brody Smoot for this nugget right here I'm gonna jump into this one this is my guy that's under the radar right now and when y'all see it, y'all going to be like, oh, he really is under the radar because my boy's 24-7 uh, profile don't even have an actual picture of him, which is crazy to me because you're going to look at just the, the stats of this kid and you're going to be like, wow. You're going to be like, wow. But check this out. Under the radar, we got my guy. <laughs> uh, T, can I take this down real quick? I'm going to take the uh, overlay down if you don't mind. That ain't it. Um, here you go. I want to get that off of there for a second. And then we could put the banner at the bottom. No, that ain't it. I'm sorry, y'all. Because I really just wanted the... Uh, I want y'all to be able to see everything on the film. But I guess this is straight. This will be straight. We could edit this up. Give me a second, y'all. Let me edit this up real quick. Okay, there we go. I think that's going to be straight. 
How that look? That look better? Thumbs up in the chat if that look better. Let me go. Let me know. Let me know. Do that look better? I just made a small adjustment, a little few inches here and there. Let me know if that look better. So, Caden Proctor, check this out, y'all. You got a young man, 6'6". Six, six. They got him listed as an athlete. When y'all see the film, y'all going to see why they got him listed as an athlete. 6'6", six, six, 200 pounds, out of Bowden, Georgia, class of 2026. Look at this, y'all. No stars. No. And I'm, I'm setting this up because I want y'all to. When y'all watch this, <laughs> when y'all watch this film, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for y'all. I'm not gonna do that to y'all. All right, I'll, y'all know me. I only do the first thirty seconds, right? I only do the first thirty seconds, and then I stop. So, uh, <laughs> you let me know if y'all ready to get into it. If y'all ready to get into it, put some fire emojis in the chat, man. If y'all ready to get into it, I'm not gonna start until I see some fire emojis in the chat. Get some fire emojis in the chat. Before we jump on Cater Prothos Phil, man. Let's go, man. Shout out to the 309 in the chat, man. Make sure y'all like in the stream before y'all leave if y'all have to go. I know I get everybody's pre-lunch hour when they're transitioning to lunch. So make sure you're liking the stream. So when you come back to YouTube, it pops back up. This stream pops up, pops back up for you. Uh fire in the chat. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, we got a few fire. We got a little bit of fire in the chat. Let's get into it, man. Uh Pro Throw, where your uh film at? Here we go. Let's get to it. Wide receiver, tight end, linebacker. All right, look. First, first look. There's a current player on our roster right now. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all know I always say I'm not going to do this to y'all, but I always end up doing it, stopping the video and starting it. But when you look at a current true freshman on the roster right now, who does this young man resemble just in his uniform, right? Who does he, who does he resemble? I mean, it's, it and his ear is like crazy at the targets that we're going. Shane, Shane Brown, you hit it right on, t- right on the head, my guy, right on the head. This, I, I when I first seen the picture, I was like, that boy looked like Caleb Odom. But the crazy thing is, he's uh, two years younger than Caleb Odom, and he's six six, two hundred pounds right now. Two fifteen, I think, is is what he he was claiming. That's crazy. Hey, Stevie Nicks, what's crazy is me and Brody Smoot just found out this morning that he's a distant, co- a, a second cousin. His mom is a second cousin of Tyrone Prothrow. I, I, I can't confirm nor deny that, but that's what Brody Smoot sent to me. We were talking about it. Boom. He said, yeah, man, mom saying that they, they got some ties to the top. And if y'all have heard, about, heard, t- heard me talk about former receivers that I love, DJ Hall, Tyron Protho are the first two names you're gonna hear coming out coming out of my mouth. Talking about pre saving DJ Hall, Tyron Protho. Man, I you know what? If those two were playing in this day and age, we would miss out on a lot of recruits. We would miss out because you're not you're not coming in taking nothing from those guys. You know those were greats, man. They they played in the wrong era. DJ Hall, Tyron Protho especially. DJ Hall kind of. Came along when it was time it was kind of evolving. The game was evolving, but Tyron Pro Throw, he was definitely in a uh, in an age where like passing was 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 a, a, a not even a commodity. It was it was so far a few. Uh I'm switching the TV so I can see. Bet. Let me know when I can start it. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and crank this thing up for y'all, man. Let's get into the let's get into it. Caleb Odom Jr. 2.0, whatever y'all want to call him. This young man, I mean, look at him, bro. Specimen. Six six. Look like an NFL size receiver already. Look at him. Where is he split? He split out at the X. Uh, uh. Oh, oh. Come on, get big on him. Why is this young? Why is this big old dude? How is he pulling away from players? Look at all the space. That's why. Four was scared. Four was scared. Hey, look at him pulling off. Pulling off. <laughs> oh, he a up back. He one of the up guys. Catching it. Don't take it to the house. Oh, Lord. Don't. Sweet Jesus. Get them knees up. Oh, he get his knees up. You know I get them knees up. Somebody been doing some speed training. Let's watch this ride. What we got here? Nice little post. Just get inside. Climb separate high point the ball catching stride great pass by the quarterback too he had pressure in his face uh-oh 
concentration. That thing tipped off about three different folks' hands or two. Oh, and he got some swag. Was he celebrating? Was he celebrating? Was he celebrating? I went back too far, didn't he? Was he celebrating? Y'all know I'm gonna get to the comments after I get keep uh get a few clips through. Yeah, that was a bad pass. Good concentration though. This is a playoff game too. They playing in uh Mercedes Benz. Jump ball. You're not getting that from him. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Let's talk about it. And it wasn't a great ball, y'all. It wasn't a great ball. Watch how he just at the last second to get his body in position. Look how look how you let the DB think he got a lean on me. You holding on to me. You're not gonna brace your arm. Look, look. I caught him in the act, y'all. Y'all see me catching him in the act. Why are you holding on to me, son? You ain't slick trying to pull that Deion Sanders. And uh, what it called? Uh, what the name was? Ronnie Lot was the was the was the uh, my dad say it's an old school DB. I think it was Ronnie Lot was 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 good for that. Getting a tug on your on your hip on your on your your waist or your arm when your arm down. Y'all y'all know that technique. No, it's not it's not Tyrone's son, but they supposed to be related. He's uh, Caden Proto is from Bowden, Georgia, man. He's from Bowden, Georgia, class of twenty twenty six. You can't teach size. You can't teach. You can't. It's hard to teach this, right? That's why I'm thinking this kid got to have some basketball background. And, and mind you, Brody Smoot just put me on this young man. I know Alabama. I think Alabama has reached out to him and, and offered. I can't confirm or deny. But uh, this is a kid that, you know, you, you don't want to not look at, right? Just look at the size different, man. That corner out there got to be about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, That's a nice size corner out there. Oh, oh, oh. I like the setup. I like the stack. I like the stack move right here. Oh, my God. I like the stack move right here. Check this out. One and, and Shoulder still square up field. That's one thing I like to see when, when receivers are getting ready to make their cuts. If it's not past a 45 angle cut, you should be trying to focus on keeping your shoulder square up field. You know what I'm saying? It's all about getting that flexibility in your hips so you can turn out a thing. You know, a lot of people that when we do the karaoke drills, they think it's a joke, but that's supposed to help you work your quick, your your uh your hip flexors, being able to, to quickly get your 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 lower extremities turned in directions. And when you do the proper training and you do the proper footwork skills training and explosive hip flexor, not hip flexor, but uh twitch muscle training, you know things that kind of not weight training, but things that you know provide slight resistance and cause you to fire through. You know a lot of band kicks and all of that stuff. You get results like this. I mean, and it looks so simple, but as a coach, you see, you see what you see the work. You see the work. As a coach, as a person that evaluates football, you don't necessarily have to be a coach. You could just be somebody that knows football, right? You see the work being imp implemented here. A, a slight, a slight little swim, you know what I'm saying? Get out the way. And just watch how he digs into this route after he comes out. He digs into it, gets his head up. His first two steps out of that cut, he's digging. He's digging. First two steps, watch. Chop, chop, dig, dig. No wasted motions there. I like that. I like it. I'm sorry. I had to stay on that one for a minute. Holy Jesus. Children are being baptized. Children are being baptized by the moment. I like to see this from six, six guys. Jesus Christ. Stop. Hold on. Go back. What are you doing? Son. And that wasn't bad defense by the DB. That was not bad defense. He got kind of uh, turned around a little bit. A little bit of hand fighting from Bo. Making a play on the ball. I like it. I mean, he's 6'6", y'all. Whole tap. Still got, had the awareness to get his foot down. I love it. He's going to play wide receiver at the next level. Unless he gets up to like 245, because he might even grow it. He's 6'6 six, six at 6'6 six, six going into his junior year, y'all. That's that's what's scary about it. He is six foot six going into his junior year, chat. 
that is crazy man like and shane that's that's weird right i haven't heard no buzz about georgia jumping in them <laughs> bro i'm telling you brandon marshall i like that comparison i like that comparison because he's not as fast as cj right he's not as fast as cj <laughs> that's what else y'all silly man he say we need i'm i'm solid offer him right you so offer him right now hey I, I i honestly think let me ask brody real quick let me ask brody give me two seconds y'all i can ask brody I'm going I'm to just ask Brody real quick while we live, y'all. Because he'll be able to confirm for sure. I'm just now starting to set up my own little tracker too, man. I appreciate y'all. A lot of y'all have been helping me with that. Um, keeping everything organized with trying to track these. Uh, with, with tracking the, the recruits that's coming to Bama. A lot of y'all have been helping me with that. So I really appreciate it, man. Uh, let's see. Let me see what he say, cause I, I I liked it. I I would love for us to really get in this kid's ear, and um, get him on campus ASAP, just to see. Okay, Brody just confirmed we did we did we've already offered this young man. That's huge. That's huge. So we ahead. We, they ahead of us. I'm behind. I'm behind. We already offered this young man. I'm excited, man. I did that. Just that just did my little heart good. Yeah, so that's good. We already got an offer out to him, right? Um, let's finish it. Let's finish the film. I, I mean, why why stop now? I, I'm I'm curious to see what else this young man gonna do. What we got? Three more minutes of it. Let's let's run it straight through. No more stops. No more stops. Chop chop chop. Stacking them up. Got them flat footed. Then you just climb. Give yourself space between the numbers and the sideline, so you can adjust to the ball. Quarterback keep it in bounds. You make a play on it. I just look. I mean. And you know, naturally at the high school level, he's going, oh my God, great play design. Can he pull away? Is he going to score? Oh yeah, this is the team he was running away from earlier. Yeah, they like, man, bump it. I, he's fast for a size too, y'all. What y'all going to think? What y'all think? Like a four, five, two? Oh! Great concentration. Great concentration. Let's go back to it. Great concentration. That's the corner from the other side, y'all. That's crazy. That's good awareness by him. Mm. Oh, you gave me one-on-one? -on -one? No, it's a safety over top. You can't get that, though, too slow. Good, hey, good, good, good throw. I like this quarterback, too. Who's the quarterback? You need to be looking at the quarterback, too. Uh-oh, he out there linebacker. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, man. Free safety? <laughs> that's definitely not where you want to play him but he's doing it oh okay <laughs> okay Kaden. Kaden, I, I i stand corrected you move like a big man though i'm not gonna lie you you're not a safety but you move like a big man that would be crazy to have a 6'6 230 pound safety out there at the college level chase down to stop the return uh oh uh oh uh oh good hustle Good hustle. That's what I'm saying. He's not slow by any means. I like this quarterback, man. I like this quarterback. He split. Oh, get off me, little boy. <laughs> you bully. Oh, my God. What? Why? <laughs> oh man, buddy probably went to him having man. You ain't gotta do me like that. You ain't gotta do me like that. Working his way inside, climbing. I mean, this kid's confident in his route of route running ability. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I saw somebody say hybrid tight end. Yeah, John. 
I mean, that's what we thought about Caleb Odom, and you see what happened once he got there. John, imagine if he was put at corner. That'd be it'll be kind of weird to see. I wouldn't put him in uh on the, the plus side of the field as corner. Maybe maybe in red zone, put him at corner, but not on the plus side. So with that being said, you don't get to critique a player for real when he hasn't been put in a position to succeed. If you choose to, then you just don't like them. Oh, 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 y'all talking about Miro still? Noah Carter? I say Noah Carter, Caleb Odom. Like, he, you could put him just about anywhere, man. I like him. Yeah, I like it. Smooth. Why does the kid, this kid got no stars? Uh, probably hasn't camped. You know, that's probably the main reason. A lot of kids, they just... Some kids aren't into the camp scene, right? Some kids they they they, they find their niche and they go to a camp and they they kind of get a look and they get offered. That's what that's what happened with QB Reese. That's what happened with QB Reese. Now, transition to our on the radar segment. This name I think everybody knows about this young man. Uh, he was recently offered by the Alabama. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what he does um, with his commitment throughout his recruiting journey. I was able to talk with this young man for a good extensive amount of time yesterday and um very solid young man has a great head on his shoulders uh he i mean his his desire to play at the next level is matched to some of the greats that we talk about some of the the great up-and-coming recruits that we talk about so he's putting himself right in that stratosphere with the top tier guys of his recruiting class you look at uh daryl johnson class of 25 um they have him listed at a linebacker but once you see his film He's another guy that could play everywhere. And the fact that, and, and I want y'all to look at this. This is another linebacker, probably a linebacker look that Alabama is going to continue to go by, right? Um, Let me make sure. Hold on. Make sure I got the updated one. Mm -mm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, bet, bet, bet. Here we go. I wanted to see if they had something different on his rivals account, his rivals profile. I kind of like this one. All right, let me use this one, y'all. I'm going to use this one for y'all. Hold on. Let's share this one. My boy Duke Johnson, man. Uh... 63205, linebacker, running back, wide receiver, athlete, whatever you want to call him. Uh, the kid plays everywhere on the field, right? Not only does he play everywhere on the field, uh <laughs> look, uh uh Brody Smooth said reminds me of Caleb Odom mixed with Johnny Wilson. <laughs> if y'all don't know who Johnny Wilson is, go go look him up. Yeah, if y'all don't know who Johnny Wilson is, to have that type of look or that type of comparison lets you know that you know Brody know football, because that's I mean, literally right there um but yeah y'all see that uh y'all see the um the size i mean he fits the linebacker mold that uh kane womack and the defensive staff are targeting right um you see they got him casted to florida state i would beg to differ i would beg to differ i will say that all right you heard it here first i will beg to differ shout out to my youngin daryl duke johnson Let's get into this highlight film, man. Let's get into this highlight film. I'm excited to get into this one. Uh, another kid that, that, I mean, if he comes to Bama, it's going to be a problem for the rest of the nation. He'll provide some quality depth at that linebacker position, and uh, we'll see him go to work, man. Here we go. Jumping into it right now. Outside linebacker, look at him. Look at him. Speed to the ball. Speed to the ball. Off the edge. Look, dissecting the play. Eye discipline. Sure tackling. Coming off the edge. I mean, you just put him on the edge, let him go. Noah Carter. Noah Carter like QB Reese like. You put him on the edge and let him go. Now he's that running back. Get up field. Oh Lord. He's gone home. Off the edge again. Let's get it. Oh, I discipline. That was a good fake. I'm not gonna lie. That quarterback ran a good fake there. Don't lie. Check him out. That's a good fake right there. Huh. I discipline. I discipline. I like it. At corner? Or is he just split out? Let me go back to that line, man. I didn't get to see the pre-snap. I 
I need to go back to that alignment. I'm gonna let this one run. I gotta see the alignment on that one, y'all. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta start. Okay, what we got? Uh, let me find it. You got motion coming through there. So what is he? Is he split at corner? Y'all, explain something to me. How are you on the boundary of the play, right? And as the play unfolds, you, you're the guy not even trying to block you, Daryl. You just took it upon yourself to bring him into this play, right? And then still make you you brought him from where you took him from the mountaintop, right? And you brought him over and over to the valley. So you could grab some di some of them lilies, right? Why? He wasn't, I mean. Dang, Daryl, like, you ain't got to do folks' children like this. You don't have to do this to people's children. That's all I'm saying. Look at him, dissecting. Oh, my God, the pursuit. I love it. I love it. And so what I'm liking about him, his first steps are quick, right? Um, He's versatile. You can line him up just about anywhere right now. Let me get to y'all comments. What y'all thinking? Watch it. Sure, for sure, yeah. Edge rusher, I'm thinking. You got to put him there. You got to put him there. I mean, too much speed. And he's going to get bigger. He's gonna get he's gonna get up to that 225, 240. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. Hybrid fluctuate between linebacker and safety coverage linebacker. Right, Jeremy. So I think uh you're looking at possibly the next uh we'll see the first phase of that style of linebacker in Justin Jefferson this year. I think Justin Jefferson is gonna fit the mold of what this defense needs out of the inside linebacker room when it comes to playing against pass heavy teams because you can put him in coverage, you can he can cover out the back, cover the guys out the backfield. Um he's a to dissect the run very well he's a aggressive uh he attacks aggressively when he's trying to run fit right so i'm excited to see that um what else isaiah simmons type of guy simmons played the rover husky position at clemson um i think i think i think duke gonna be too big to play that that area i think he's gonna get up to like the 235 area right once he gets on campus or if he comes on campus once he gets to the college ranks i think he uh <laughs> I think he's going to be at the 230, 235 range. Uh, range. I don't. I don't think he's going. He's going to stay light enough to stay in the secondary. And we we've had uh, some big safeties in the past, but not that big. 230. I mean, look at his frame. He's he's not he's not DB frame to me in my person my personal opinion. Uh, looks good. I discipline edge all day. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to move that kid off the edge unless he shows some type of uh, innate ability to play inside linebacker and use that range that side to side range to uh, cover. And be in space and handle business. Oh, this the play we was talking about. Oh no, it ain't the one we was talking about early. Uh oh, and he worth fifteen. Daryl, if you on this film, if you on this highlight, throwing somebody else's child around like a a, a rag doll, I'm gonna have to stop the film because we're not supposed supposed to promote um, domestic violence and child abuse on this channel. And this is the second or third instant in this short minute and four seconds of your film that we have seen you disrespect other folks' children and manhandle them. And, and you, you, you need to stop it. You need to stop it. Well, actually, don't stop it. We like it. <laughs> we like it. I mean, just look at him. Get off me, son. What are you? And then he goes and makes the tackle. He big, man. He looked bigger than six, too. What, what, what the thing said he did? Oh, he's 6'3". Okay. Yeah, I mean. Wearing that 15. He slick. Looked like Dallas wearing that 15 on that last play. He 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 kind of looked like Dallas, y'all. Did he block it? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He kind of looked like Dallas Turner, y'all. Not the same speed. We haven't seen we haven't seen any like pass rush moves just much yet. Just a lot of dissecting and, and, and blowing the play up. Haven't seen him put any plat. <sighs> and you know what? I think that's something that he's trained on and keyed on as far as a uh, as a defender, getting off of blocks and getting to the play because he has a solid technique. I don't know if y'all noticed, even on the other one where he ragged all the guy, just look at him. Mm, mm, lock, lock. Oh. That's kind of what they teach the D-lineman, uh, Coach Saban in that staff. 
Freddie Roach, they was teaching the D lineman last year for gap scheme. Vision, vision. Look at Bo Scarborough. Look at Bo Scarborough. <laughs> Daryl, what you doing, big boy? Uh oh. And he catch the ball. Is he gonna pull away? Nope, nope. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Look at his frame. I think he's gonna get bigger. I think he's gonna get up to the 245 range. Oh, look at him. Dissecting the play. Pursuit angle. Awesome. He knows how to get flat when going down the sideline to chase a, chase the play, right? Not rounding his his pursuit angle. Uh oh. Wildcat. Wildcat. Look at that stride. <laughs> That's a big boy, man. Dude. That's a big boy. I can't wait to meet him. Can't wait to meet him Wednesday, y'all. The conversation was so so enlightening and, and, and heartwarming. Man, this kid is gonna be something. Look at him. He's over here, y'all. If y'all looking for him. Don't he look like young Dallas standing right there? Can I get some some why uh yeah, Facebook still cracked. Listen, uh, can I get some yeses and no's in there? Don't he look kind of like young Dallas standing right there? If y'all agree, give me a yes. If y'all if y'all don't, give me a no. Like even just right there, he looks like young Dallas. Young Dallas Turner standing right there. I don't know if y'all paid attention to a lot of Dallas uh Turner's demeanors on the field, but he this is Dallas Turner. This this reminds me of Dallas Turner right here. Just this right here. Is it a reach? Am I tripping? Give it to both facts, Janet. Uh, am I tripping though? Am I tripping? He he does resemble Dallas Turner. In the last scheme, the DT's job was to was to be non-existent and let the linebacker shine to be fair. Josh Upton, to a certain extent, you're true. To 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 a certain extent, um, and the wording, I would never say that. I don't think Coach Saban ever brought anybody to to be. Uh, but but look, um, <laughs> I, I I would definitely say that gap gap contain that gap scheme on the defense is it, it just got played out, man. It worked good against run heavy teams because that's what it was built for. And Coach Saban started adding on nuances. He, he and Kirby Smart started adding on uh, different levels to show back end support um, and coverage uh, options and run support options. So uh, that's why the scheme was so hard to learn because traditionally, the way that Coach Saban had you, the guys playing up front, it wasn't built to really stop any type of high power offense that would put the ball in the air um, 65, 70% of the game. And you saw that start to be prevalent when uh, Texas A&M and Missouri came into the league. Like A&M came on the scene and they just kind of changed the game. Same with Missouri. And then Mississippi State, you know, with Leach and that that style of offense gave us problems for a few years. Ole Miss. I mean, uh, you saw last year, Tennessee, LSU, those type of offenses gave us problems. So uh, you got to change the scheme up up front and, and rely on your, your, your front four, whether it's four true D linemen or – two uh two big d and and, and pause two big d linemen <laughs> and uh two outside linebackers you know that's gonna kind of be in that standing uh technique on the edge so i can't wait to see it man a mixture of dallas and dante hightower david those are that's a uh that's like a championship bloodline breed right there like if you you know how you got um champion bloodlines of dogs if you if you had two genetic uh Connections of those two. Talking about playing linebacker. Whoo. Whoo. He's at minus 55 pounds. Yeah, because them boys, uh, uh, high tower was huge, man. <laughs> Cinco said. <laughs> y'all already, look, y'all know I be on it, man. Y'all know gonna keep me. Uh, not the first year. Not the first year, uh, Sarita. And there were times, see, I think, uh, Leach just never ended up getting a quarterback, but there were times where we could have been exposed. Um, even even during Dak's time, you know, the way they spread the ball out with Dak before uh, Leach got there, you know, was was different at Mississippi State. So, and it gave us problems. It gave us problems. We just knew how to get it. I have been cutting up late a little bit. I have been cutting up. I've been cutting up a little bit. I'm happy to be with y'all, man. Y'all make it easy for me to cut up. Uh, yeah, man. This dude, I, I like I like what I'm seeing from Caden Proctor. Uh, not Caden Proctor. This is uh Daryl Duke Johnson, man. I like what I'm seeing from Duke Johnson. Let's see what happens here. What's what's happening? Uh oh. So, so with this film, right? It's starting to become too easy for this young man. Like he just looked bored. Uh oh. Oh. 
Is that a film study moment? Is that a film study moment? Now that I'm seeing it from this angle. Because, okay, to me, all right, y'all just listen to me for a second. Break this down with me. So right now, and this is this is Duke right here. This is Duke. So right here, I'm thinking he's probably looking at the formation and say, wait. Like, in, in the moment, he's like, hold on. I seen this when they get in the red zone on, on film. Hold on. Let me make a let me let me make a play. Cause we might get motion off of this. I'm about to bump that. I remember this. Yeah, yeah. I know where it's going. And the thing is, he had his eye on the motion guy and the ball getting handed off to the running back. Look at him coming off the edge. Mm -hmm. They got some dudes on their defense, though. He ain't the only one. They got some dudes. Look at him coming off the edge. Can't even account for him. Pursuit, chase down. Love it. Let's get a few more plays in before we transition to our chat talk, y'all. As a matter of fact, we'll do a review of both players. All right, bet, man. I've seen enough, man. I, and I'm glad Alabama has offered this young man already. Um, Caden and, uh, and Duke. I think Duke is more so on the radar. He's he's built up a lot more hype with uh with his camp and uh his 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 camp presence. Uh and, and looking at Caden, man, it's only a matter of time before it's 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 all you know up up for him. I mean like really up. Um I mean just the natural abilities, right? On both sides of the ball, not just not just as a wide receiver, but on both sides of the ball. So let's let's kind of do an overview of, of both prospects that we were able to view today. And shouts out to both of these young men for allowing me to uh, review that film. I always try to get some type of um, some type of go ahead to to you know present these these players in front of you all. You get what I'm saying? So um, Duke Johnson Jr. Yes, Duke Johnson Jr. I'm about to pull it up right now for you. Let's do let's do Duke first. Let's do an assessment on Duke. So just based off of what you've seen, Duke playing off the edge. You've seen him line up at running back, but uh, primarily playing off the edge. If I had to assess him today, um, I think he's a four star, you know, which is which is good with me. You know, I, I, I'm not big on the, the whole star ratings and all that stuff. I mean, if a kid can play, he's going to get seen um, if he puts if he continues to work and put himself in the right position. Right. Um, but Duke Johnson, uh, as you saw, his other profile had him at six, three, two oh five. And that's what I'm feeling. So 6'3", 205. And I'll share this one right here. 6'3", 205 out of Eastman, Georgia, Dodge County High School, right? Uh, he's uh, He has offers from Alabama, Arbor, Duke, East Carolina, Florida, Florida State. I mean, plus 18 more. Look at the list. List goes on. List goes on. List goes on. Shout out to Rivals for uh, their, their, their website and their, um, their recruiting database and what they do over there. But yeah, uh, and then you go to Caden Protho. Uh, I didn't even let y'all grade Duke. What we grade in Duke, y'all? What we grade in Duke Johnson? A, B, C. What's 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 his what's his uh recruit grade level? I'm I'm gonna say a solid. I'm gonna say a solid A. I'm gonna say a solid A. At this level, you can look at raw talent and see that he's doing the small things to kind of perfect his craft. Right, he's doing the small things. Um, at his size, 6'3", 205, right? Um, you can see the frame is there. He's not going to be a smaller body. He's going to get big. Um, if he can maintain that speed, I, I'm going to go with a strong A-. minus. Put it like that. I'm going to go with a strong A-. minus. Uh, only because we didn't get to see any, like, rush, pass rush moves. We didn't get to see a bull rush out of him. We saw a lot of block shedding, getting to the ball, pursuit. I mean, he does that. Those does, uh, does those things awesome. Um, his instincts, IQ of the game. You saw an example of film study being implemented, remembering the things from film study, looking at cues. Probably he probably heard something too with the cadence that uh forced, you know, that gave him the the inkling to go in and be in position to make that play. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say an A minus. I'm gonna say a solid A minus. I definitely and, and when I talk to him, I'm like, man, what a pass rush stuff, what a what a what a bull rush, what a what a spin moves, what a jabs. You know, y'all remember Noah Carter had a few of those on his on his film. You know, where he was just kind of cooking, you know, leaving guys, reaching for air while he going to the quarterback. I don't know if y'all remember. <laughs> Noah Carter had a clip posted from the uh, Under Armour camp uh, a few weeks ago 
and uh he was going against a five-star offensive tackle and the uh pass rush move he put on that young man um i mean it was a jab inside spin and uh the guy was reaching for air he was reaching for air so yeah a minus i like those i like those y'all b b plus a minus a a minus i like those i like those i appreciate y'all smook you crazy boy you cracked me up with those comments about abusing somebody <laughs> scott i'll just be trying to keep y'all engaged man these segments they get drawn out sometimes because i get excited so try to keep y'all engaged larry larch exactly cover skills he's too light right now to play on the edge not and that's but he's he's going into his junior year i mean he's going into his senior year. he's going into his senior year. uh you look at the rest of the alabama linebackers that we're recruiting that even came in this 24 class Quinn Reese is uh six two six three, like two fifteen, two two twenty at at max. Um, Noah Carter, same thing, two twenty two twenty five, six three six four. Um, who else came in the class? Sterling Dixon came in on the slim side. So it's the style of running uh, linebacker that Kane Womack is is looking for right now to transition into this new style and new scheme that he's going to be calling on the defensive side. So I like it, man. I like it, Larry. But you you definitely right. He does have the coverage skills. He does have the coverage skills. Now, this one right here, this is the mystery, y'all. The under the radar. I'm not even gonna get into it. Y'all remember how hype I was about this young man and uh watching that film. What's what's his grade? Caden Pro Throw, uh, out of Bowden, Georgia, Bowden High School, class of 2026, 6'6, 200 pounds on his profile. I'm willing to bet that kid is like 215. 215. I'm willing to bet he's like 215. But Caden Proctor, what I mean, Caden Pro Throw. I said Proctor. Caden Pro Throw. What what are we giving him? A A plus A. Okay, I think y'all being real nice. Brody said A. Yeah, I think y'all being real nice. Coach Smoot gonna be Coach Smoot gonna be a little a little more strict because I see the skill set and I see what's gonna develop. Um, I get this young man a solid A plus, man. <laughs> ah man, I, I mean, I get this man a solid A plus to be a a, a twenty six kid at this level already even even if he wasn't displaying college like tight hybrid tight end wide receiver um if he's not as clean as he's not going to be as clean i ain't gonna say display he's not going to be as clean as those guys but for what we were able to observe on film today his route running ability is that of a wide receiver not a not a hybrid tight end you look at his footwork I told y'all we broke down one with his routes where he kind of stacked the guy up. The stutter move. I mean, shoulders were still square, facing facing upfield. He stacked the guy, jab step outside, and those first two steps out of that that move were driving steps. He, I mean, his the way he drives and gets his knees up, the way he pumps his arm, the way he's able to find the ball, you know, over the shoulder, locate the ball in the air when he's jump balling, the way he uses his body, you know, the way he sets the 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 pass up. I mean, his quarterback, nice quarterback, too, because he never threw him out of bounds. Even the awareness to go up and bean top and get his foot down so he could be in bounds. I like it. I'm going to get this dude an A+. Plus. I said I'm going to give him an A+. Plus. Let me go Let me go through. I, and that's only because he's going into his, his junior year. He's going into his junior year. That's what I'm uh, – A, A+, plus, A, A+, plus, A. Oh, my boy, A. Shout out to my brother, Brody Smoot. He's in the chat. Y'all go check him out. Um, if you haven't already, go check my boy Brody Smooth out. I got some hairs in my nose. That's what I thought I had a booger. It's got nose hairs. I gotta go clean up today. But uh, shout out to my boy Brody Smooth. He the one put me on Caden Pro Throw. All credit goes to him for finding this guy. That's why I said under the radar, under my radar, under the radar for Bama. A Alabama has offered Brody right. Has Alabama offered? I did confirm that earlier. Brody's in the chat. Pro Throw helped lead bow into the state. Championship last year, too. They beat Manchester and five-star defense lineman Justice Terry, who is a Georgia commit, I believe, right? Justice Terry, that's a Georgia commit. Solid B-minus, got to keep him humble. I don't know. Ain't nothing about a grade going to stop this young man from... I mean, you could be humble. You could be humble and be great, right? You could be humble and be be, the, be at the front and talk. It, it don't mean... It don't mean you... I mean, I look at his energy on the field. I don't see him yapping a lot in those clips. Uh oh, who this? I gotta answer this, y'all, real quick. Hello, hello. Okay. Won't nobody important, right? I thought it was one of the recruits. Can't be missing those phone calls. Yes, Justice is committed to UGA facts. 
Yeah, so I'm going to give him an A plus, man. Hey, a Ron in the chat. What's good, man? He can the pro throw coach. Uh, Brody Smoot, we were able to confirm that he's uh, his mother is a second cousin or a distant cousin. I think one of the words was used. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely uh, some type of relation there. And we were talking about it because uh, I said that name is very rare. I played with Quentin Prothrow at Faulkner University, and he he was of relation to Tyrone. Um, like I said, Prothrow is not a common name. You, so if you find a Prothrow, you either married into the family, you're you know you was married into the family, or you know some type of step. Like it, it but there's got to be some type of relation. And you look at the, the skills. I mean, go up and get it like Tyrone did, right? If you watch Tyrone Proto, you saw our distant relatives, right? That's, and, and Brody Smooth, if y'all ever want to fact check me, anything that I'm reporting, that's recruits. Uh, that's that's guys that's, you know, thinking about committing, guys that's going to commit. You ever want to fact check me? Go check Brody Smooth's Twitter. Go check Brody Smooth's Twitter. That's my brother. We, we've, we've connected through this industry, right? Um, both up and coming, young talents, right, in the industry. And we've connected. He's actually uh uh over at Todd 100.9. I support everything they do over there. Ryan Fowler, um, uh Wyatt over there, all those guys. I support everything they do over there, man. They 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 do quality content, quality news, reports, everything. What's the spam? He got I'm telling you, Brian, he got to the way he go up and get it, bro. The way he go up and get the ball, that that's his son, maybe. Can we hey can we get him a few checks cut? You know, y'all know. Shout out to shout out though, Coach Smook on my lunch break roll tide, brother. Hey, Patriot Life, what's good, man? Appreciate you for pulling up, man. You know, we love when you come through, man. We love when you show up. I be looking for all of y'all, my my uh daily fan funders. I be looking for y'all every day. So I think we got we got uh I, I think we got a, a, a good a good gist of what this young man has to offer when it comes to uh the talent, right? And um I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see what he was what he's gonna continue to do. Um I think I think for for a lot of people, this is going to be one of those things where uh, you kind of just want to let the young man develop. You don't want to rush him. You want to allow him to develop and just continue to grow. Um, uh oh, I got the wrong thing up there. Uh, you want to continue to let him grow. You want to continue to just uh, let him fit his mold right in his frame. And and then you pack on the weight. Right. Uh, me personally, I think he will end up transitioning to tight end at the next level. Um, only because I think he might end up be a six, seven, six, eight. And me and Brody were talking last night and we were saying, man, if we can get, uh, what Darnell Washington was supposed to be for Georgia out of, um, Caden Proctor, that will be a perfect fit for him. Use him in a lot of the red zone sets. Y'all see the jump ball ability. Um, I think you, you, but you can't limit him like you limited Darnell. Um, this guy, I, I'm telling you, he's gotta be like a solid four, five, one, four, five, three at his size. Um, and to be at that speed and that's at that size at that age, uh, you can get some skills training, some developmental training to get your speed up, get your twitch muscles activated and, and kicking. Chat, let's jump into it, man. We got 10 minutes. We're gonna, I'm gonna talk with y'all, man. We got 10 minutes. What y'all want to talk? Did I say Proctor again? It's only because of the first name. My son's name is Caden, too. So, uh, it's only because of the first name having to say Caden. Brad Smith, what's good? How you feeling today, man? Appreciate you for pulling it for pulling up, man. Drake Riley, smooth. What is Chuck Morrell role going to be at Alabama? I heard they hired him. That's the guy from Washington, right? If that's the guy from Washington, I think both of those guys are coming on as off-field analysts. Brody Smooth, what's that role? What's that role, Brody? Tell me. Oh, there you go. A special assistant to coach the board. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. I know a couple of uh, outlets were reporting him as being an off-field analyst. So that makes sense, though. Per personal assistant. Uh, special assistant, kind of like said, kind of like said was to Coach Saban. That'll be cool. I think I think that's good. You bring somebody that's familiar with you. Bush Jones or South Sincere. Okay, okay. Yeah. So they're going to be basically handling, like, quality control guys and all of that. They'll be, like, they're in their line of work. Handling those guys, directing them guys, passing the, the directors off to them. Ryan is a good dude. Me and Ryan used to talk all the time. I'm the guy who was on the Doomsday Prepper TV show on National Geographic channel. Ryan who? What 
What's up, Bama? I I'm trying to figure out who you talk to, bro. Or what you talking about? Can you can you reiterate what I probably missed the comment? I'm not being funny either. Cause I, I was I seen that whenever I see long comments like that, I try to get to them because they might have something there. Uh Smooth, do you think QB headset will help Miro with pre-snap reads? Um, uh, so it depends on how they do it. Um, if it's one of those things where um is based off the play clock and you 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 got a time limit before communications is cut. Um, and I need somebody if somebody can research the the ins and outs of how that's gonna be. Um, and send it to me. I'll, I'll put it out for everybody to see. Um, and I definitely give you credit for finding it. You know, I don't mind. You know, Jared put me on a lot of information in the chat. I don't mind, you know, saying that I got put on. That's how that's how you grow in this industry. You you resource. You use information and you re use reliable information. So, um, but yeah, if, if it's one of those things where it's cut off at the 15 second mark, I think we're going to see some, some, some major improvement with his ability to adjust um you probably won't see them as interactive towards later the season because by that time he'll have a lot of repetition game reps right and um he should develop that that sense if he's going to progress and be the leader in this offense the starting quarterback for this offense he's going to be have to be able to progress week in week out and show his improvement and be able to diagnose pre-snap reads so i think that is going to be something to look out for um and if there is a time limit you know I, they'll have something in plan for it how are these players cognitively adopted, uh, adapted to a crazy wild scheme versus what they were used to? Uh, I'm trying to figure out the right way to word this. So if you look at the scheme on both sides of the ball, right? Um, Coach Saban, great as he was, he had a lot of core values that were instilled with old school style of football, right? And a lot of times that showed up in games where we played against younger coordinators, up and coming coordinators who had skill sets and personnel that could really challenge us, you know, head up talent match wise, right? And so I like to go back to like the first signings of it um, against uh, in 2019 against Joe Brady. That was just a, uh, and even though that was a good game, right? It wasn't because of the defense playing great. Um, it was more so of of a shootout, being the offenses we're, we're we're doing, and both defenses were using old school style schemes, right? That neither one could stop. I mean, you got just as much talent on each side, but now when you start adding uh, schematics to talent on the field, like solid schematics, that's when you see the separation. And for a long time. That's where Alabama was with the rest of college football, mainly the SEC, but the rest of college football is like we had talent, but schematically on defense, we were so far apart. That's why people started going to spread spread us out more. They started saying, they said, oh, snap, Ole Miss got him in space, A&M got him in space, and they they done beat him. They done beat him. Four, four of Coach Saban losses in the past uh, two years uh, at that time were to A&M, Ole Miss, those were the only two teams that was that was really doing it and the one off with auburn so you look at how things started to evolve coach saban began to try to create nuances and, and different things of that nature but they just were so outdated so this style of defense on the swarm on the defense side the swarm defense like i said it's a lot of attacking up front in the trenches a lot of attacking no weight in no not not a lot of gap contain of that gap scheme it's a lot of attacking your linebackers are, are free up to to clean up right and work in space, you know, sort out space, right? Even in coverage, they're sorting out space. Um, so I'm excited. Offensively, it just appeal it, it appeals to the new age of, of kids. It, I mean, it looks cool. It is cool. Uh, only one player, only four sets, one defense, two defensive, one defensive guy, two defensive coaches, three QBs, four offensive coaches. Fact check that for me, Jared. Uh, wait, resource, uh, label the source for me so I could confirm that. I don't want to just be putting crazy stuff out. Undefeated, look for technical difficulties that that was spoiled to play. Facts. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Smook, is the A day game going to have the ones going against ones? Hope there are no weird scrimmage. There are no weird scrimmage like Auburn and others. I'm, I'm not sure, man. I, I, I said I was going to go back and watch the Washington scrimmage. Uh, but um, I don't know if y'all paid attention, but yesterday during his presser, Coach Kalen DeBoer, when asked about the fourth pro, fourth quarter program, 
he was uh he highlighted how important that was for the players how important it was to the players to keep that um i don't think uh i think our style of the the our spring game has been uh very effective in determining depth chart uh going forward not so much on a defense um i'm not going forward but in the past not so much on the defensive side but more so on the offensive side we've seen it in the past how we scrimmage is benefited the offense um the defense i think the defense is the easiest thing to get put together because they're just reacting right offense is trying to force um not force but create our uh, actions like create actions and they get to react to what you're creating as an offensive uh side of the ball so yeah we we'll, we could check on that that might be a question i'm able to ask you know next uh not this week the first three practices i'm probably going to uh try to get Kyle to ask that next week when we um get to go on and talk uh do interviews with players and stuff not next week week following even Maryland coach Maryland's coach Mike Loxley was saying that he was still talking to the QB during his progressions and it's like playing a video game with live players they haven't set the cutoff time yet yeah I mean we're in spring we're in spring David so I mean there is no cutoff time you know so I I think you maximize it while you can use this time to kind of be in his ear and one thing that they did say about the headset was that it was very loud a lot of players would complain about it being too loud and they were more so worried about not being able to hear it. so they're going to try to find those levels and you got to understand these are headsets they're going to be used in lsu right when we go to baton rouge death valley right when we go to uh what that is up there in tennessee that garbage truck convention stadium uh we, we when we go up there it's going to be loud in there um i mean our home games gonna be loud too you know the georgia game we know that's gonna be crazy we know that's gonna be crazy having them at home and then Auburn Iron Bowl at home. So they're going to have to get used to getting getting those comms in those headsets, right? Name two players you want to get some playing time this year. Uh, can you be more specific? You want freshmen or just players on the roster? Because I could go more than two. I could go more than two. And I get, I get you an answer. Kalen DeBoer said he was going to keep a lot of the same stuff in A-Day. When did he say that? Because yesterday in the interview, I know he was saying about um, the fourth quarter program um i i he didn't nobody said nobody really mentioned anything about a day yesterday um at the presser so i'm not sure but hopefully he does josh hopefully he does hopefully he does uh jawan said name two players so uh i'm, I'm gonna just assume you're talking about freshmen jawan and uh two freshmen that i hope to see to get some playing time this year uh is rico scott on the offensive side i want i want to see rico scott um on the field i just feel like more than ryan williams more than uh amari jefferson more than bubba hampton he's more college receiver size ready and um if he's if he's going to be uh jaheem otis we're going to talk about jaheem otis uh but i get to it shane i i swear and it, that'll be the last one then i get up out of here i gotta get ready to get to work uh get some more work done for y'all today um but uh rico scott is one that i'm excited about and then Peyton Woodyard on the defensive side. I'm excited about seeing him. Uh, hopefully, he gets on the field as a rotational player. I know he's probably going to be on the special teams. A lot of these freshmen we're going to see on special teams. So, we'll see what I, kind of energy they're going to bring on the special teams. You know, as young guys, you want them to thrive on special teams early in their career. So, yeah. Uh, Shane Elliott says, your brother talks to Jaheim Otis. So, uh, me and Kyle, <laughs> me and Kyle were... Uh, he said, in general, I, I, I'll give you some more then. I'll give you some more, Juwan. But me and Kyle, we were, when we were walking around the facilities yesterday, uh, we saw this big old stacked, was it an F-150? I mean, just a big old truck, man. And y'all know Jaheim is from Mississippi, right? Nice truck, man. It might have been a Toyota. It might have been a Tundra. But it was stacked like a six-inch lift on it. Chrome grill, the tires, big old country. You know, uh, the big old mud and tires and i looked at the truck and i said i bet that's jaheem otis truck right but uh jaheem otis has been very quiet this off season i mean he's never been outspoken anyways um i didn't get to see him yesterday didn't see any uh a lot of photos posted of him haven't seen much from his instagram or, or anything like that so guys like him and Jaden roberts man um you're just glad that they're they're bought into the process they're like pillars of this team um they lead by example i mean big strong guys tim keenan same way all these guys are leaders for that team 
Tyler Booker is the more outspoken big man um, from the from the team, from the group. So I'm excited to see those guys, man. The F-250, something serious, too. On Ryan Fowler's interview, he talks about A-Day. Okay, I, I, I need to reference that then. I, I just don't remember it. I just don't remember it. I need to reference that. So I'll go check it out. Why are so many content creators... Why are so many content creators still believe Bama is in shambles? Whatever that means. Steven... Y'all know my little profile picture. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, but they go, they in for a rude awakening. They're going to be very disappointed. So, chat, with that being said, I really appreciate y'all for supporting the channel. Continue to support us. Do what y'all do. And uh, continue to like in and share the stream. Y'all see my green screen acting up over there? On that side. Oh, is this side being raggedy? Oh, you being raggedy. But we appreciate y'all, man. We really do. Um, I, I, I think this is an opportune time for Alabama Nation to really enjoy uh, the spring ball, um, the development of these players. The future of this team is looking very bright. I'm excited. I'm excited. And once again, shout out to everybody that super chats, the fan funders, um, everybody that, that continues to like and share the stream, all the new followers that we've gained over the past few weeks or so we appreciate you all all the new subscribers um if you want to uh give me some topics for reality or reach tonight for my segment please please send them to coach smook at gmail.com reality or reach is a segment that i do uh at least in one of my segments every day where we project we put out a projection and we say hey is this a reality or this is reach um and and a lot of times we have some good ones so and they're all the the most recent ones have been suggested by you all so i'm excited to continue to get to that uh stage y'all and um acknowledge you all in that way and continue to send them y'all that's how we want to continue to engage with you all and um do what we do do what we do as a team as a as a fan base and as uh people who just care for each other my words of encouragement for you today um there there's a level of focus that that's required in, in order to achieve greatness right i had a mentor tell me that one day i said there's a level of focus required in order to to achieve greatness right and your focus can't be on the same level as everybody else around you because um unless you're surrounded by greatness by great people that are doing great things uh you 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 just want to echo the same thing they echo you have to be focused now that doesn't mean you have to separate yourself from everybody but your walk your talk your energy your work needs to speak for itself right and that's one thing that I love about being on this team, man. Our work speaks for itself. Um, so going forward, guys, continue to support the channel. We appreciate y'all. I pray that God really blesses the rest of your day until we meet again, right? Until we meet tonight. Um, let me look at the schedule, y'all, so I can give y'all the rundown for tonight. Um, let me see. Uh, so tonight we got jerk at six then i'll be on at seven then coach sean uh coach sean will be on at seven and then i'll be on at eight that's the schedule for tonight it's gonna be good we're gonna be good oh t i just seen your message t look that was a few hours ago all right y'all so with that being said thank y'all and i y'all know how y'all know how i like to leave y'all man this is this is new era yesterday all right can i do one personal moment before i go one personal moment is not nothing bad it's not negative right Yesterday, um, I really didn't calm down until about almost three o'clock this morning. And some of the people that's in the chat right now were were in the little uh, the Twitter space with me when we were uh when we were talking about you know my day yesterday and all the things that were going on. I know some of you all, but one thing I do want to apologize to you guys for is I will not engage in any more negative back and forth on Twitter um, debates. Yes, but negativity, all of that stuff, people throwing shade on our channel i won't engage in it no more and i encourage y'all not even acknowledge it if you see it it's good to let me be aware of it but i don't even care to acknowledge it anymore guys i really am appreciative for this opportunity and before i let somebody demolish something that kyle and, and t are building and what they have graced me to be a part of i will back off and i will you know i will i will sit there and i will reevaluate my decision so because i know you all expect high standards from me and what what uh and i i expect better for myself you won't catch me in that realm again um i i don't delete 
tweets or anything because I like to remind myself where not to go and what not to do. So um, just look at yesterday as a growing mo moment for Coach Smoot. Y'all know Coach Smoot is very transparent, right? Uh, Y'all remember when Kyle came on here, it was like, you got to slow down a little bit. You know, we got great ideas, but I'm going to slow you down, pump the brakes. Um, when he did that to me, that's when I knew he cared about me because he followed that up with some constructive criticism saying he'd rather have somebody that's ready to work every day that he got to tell to slow down than having to go and find somebody and let, say, let's get work, right? I need you to do this. I need you to do that. So I'm glad to be a part of this team. And just know Coach Smoot is not giving up. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to slow down. Uh, we're going to keep getting the, the, the best content on YouTube, right? The best Bama football coverage on YouTube. That's what we're going to keep pushing. So with that being said, thank you all for supporting the channel, supporting me. You can follow me at Coach Smook on every channel, on every platform, right? Y'all, this is weird because it's backwards. Okay. So that's my right. So y'all, y'all, make sure y'all check me out on every platform at Coach Smook. Give me a follow. Uh, we hit 3.5K this morning. Appreciate y'all on Twitter. Uh, still trying to get the YouTube channel up. Um, we'll be integrating YouTube uh, Coach Smoot Network over here with Bama Football. Big surprises coming with that. Also, uh, Instagram. Check me out on Instagram. I, I'm, I'm figuring it out. I'm starting to learn how to use it, right? TikTok. We back active on TikTok, too. A lot of the edits that you see, the graphics and stuff, that's what we're going to be using TikTok for. A lot of the comedy relief stuff, we're going to be using it for that when it comes to Bama Football. Um, and I think we're going to also start doing uh, shorts over there on TikTok. So y'all go check that out. Uh, not shorts, but reaction shorts, reaction TikToks. Uh, so y'all go check me out on TikTok also if you have one. Um, I appreciate y'all again. And I'm going to leave y'all with a, a big old roll. Ride, roll. Have a blessed day. I'll see y'all this time.